Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Pete and Jeremy's D&D Time. This is Game of Three this evening. It's a legendary adventure entitled A Seed of Power, Briar. But before we dive into that, uh, I'm not going to introduce you guys because we don't do that in Legend Tier. Instead, we're going to cut into a very interesting story. Sword, you're cold. You're very, very cold. The last thing that you remembered, you were in a featureless white plane. You had said a goodbye to the old wizard, Bartholomew, and stepped through a doorway. A doorway markedly like the old door frame in the back room of Bartholomew's shop. As you stepped through, you felt just the warmth and white light, commonly associated with maybe planar travel or teleportation of some kind, really just an overwhelming sense of magical power. But now as you start to come to the cold, and as you start to try and blink, it's very bright, you can't see anything, and you feel and begin to hear strange beeping sounds around you. You feel a cool liquid on your skin. It's kind of draining out around you. Blink and look and you see in front of you a opaque or partially opaque, partially transparent crystal of some kind. You appear to be in well, like a, a, a tube of some sort. You hear a hissing sound, and that tube begins to lower around you as you look down. You're standing on what looks like a metal grate that the water has all just, or whatever this fluid is, has drained out around you. You look at yourself and find yourself dry, despite that. You're wearing a simple brown tunic, none of the rest of your gear. And looking out now is this a uh, crystalline uh, tube descends into the floor. You see many of them. Hundreds, maybe thousands. Rows and rows of these crystalline tubes. You see a metal staircase. Uh, it leads only just a few steps down to a pathway. There are large railings. It's kind of got a graded floor. Uh, below it, simply some sort of dark, you know, metal electronics, something like that. It's light here, but you can't see necessarily what's illuminating it. Probably some sort of magic. The trigonometric technologies all around you are mind-boggling, but they must have come from the gnomes, nothing else. As you step up, oh, and you kind of take a step out of this tube, you're very tight. Your back is stiff, like you haven't really moved in a long time. Quick stretch, and you seem to be all right. What do you do as you enter, well, as you step out of this container, magical thing, in this strange and foreign place? All right, that is the last time I ever drink something that wizard offers me. Okay, you just kind of mutter to yourself, and I mean, looking around, there's just more and more of these crystalline tubes all over the place. A few steps down um, to the main walkway, which is maybe 15 feet wide, it's fairly large, it's metal um, walk. You can see there are other tubes, and seeing partially through them, there are other people inside. Some of them you might recognize from Bartholomew's company. Actually, adjacent to yours, you see, well, Lana. But others you don't recognize. You see people that you maybe have never seen before, or maybe, oh, I saw that person in Central City one time. They tried to help me out when I got lost. But the vast majority of the figures inside these tubes you do not recognize. You can see down at the end of the walkway, there appears to be a large uh, metal kind of doorway 
Um, it's got a set of double doors, but there are no obvious handles to them. And you can see uh, one of those fancy trigonometric lights there that seems to be illuminating that area even more so than the rest of the dimly lit chamber that you're currently standing in. Would you like to kind of approach that doorway? Or do you want to explore around the, the tubes? Um, I'll just kind of explore a little bit, trying to figure out where I'm... Sure, yeah. I mean, you, you start walking the aisles here, and you it seems very homogenous, despite being there being so many people, right, in these canisters, in these, these crystalline tubes. They don't seem to be responsive at all. You knock on one, nothing happens. It's not like there are any obvious controls or anything near them. Um, you look around, and there's no obvious way to open them. You see, like, a horse in one of them, and you're like, why is there a horse in this tube? But whatever. Uh, how is there a horse in this tube is probably a better question. Um, but, yeah, you don't really see anything that immediately, like, interests you as you walk around. Despite there being so many technically people, the place is empty and hollow, kind of devoid of life. Your steps echo everywhere. Is there anything in particular that you were trying to look for around here, Stuart? Because right now, you've got no gear. You're just in a brown, like, tunic. No, I'm just trying to assess my surroundings, see if I can ascertain where I am. Yeah. Um... And I kind of get the feeling like that I'm on that... Uh space station yeah this is incredibly familiar actually to about two hours prior at least to your memory uh where you awoke when you battled Bar bartholomew but something about this it feels different it feels real in a way that maybe that dream that you had Maybe it was a dream, maybe it was some sort of illusory reality. This seems real in a way that that didn't. A little bit of paint scrapes off of a railing. A little detail like that wouldn't show up in a sort of illusion. You pinch yourself, but I mean, that would probably work either way. And uh, as you inevitably wander toward the large um, set of, of double doors here, that seems to be the only obvious feature in this otherwise massive chamber of tubes. You can hear voices on the other side. Um, they appear to be walking toward the door. Uh, you recognize one of them immediately uh, as your friend Kurogan, uh, and then followed by the, I wouldn't say shrill, but loud uh, uh, exclamations of of Selkris. Uh, and they, they you can't hear the exact words that they're saying, but they appear to be having some sort of a, a conversation. Um, you can hear some other kind of quieter speaking, but you don't immediately pull that out through the, the door. Would you like to like approach the door and try and pass through it? Or do you wait until they approach you? I'll uh, approach the door cautiously. Okay. You play kind of off to the side where I'm just not like uh, not standing right in front of the opening. Yeah, so you kind of pass over to the side of it, uh, and as you kind of do so, you're out of the way. The door slides open, and Kurogan, Selkris, uh, and Lance, you three uh, pass through. Um, so you're telling me three other people have already woke, woken up and we somehow miss it? Where the hell were we? <laughs> Well, we were playing that poker game, remember? And, I mean, uh, yes, but nobody came and told us? Guess not. We should have something to monitor these more closely. Mm. We should uh, have uh, Roger man. set up like a monitoring system. Yeah, the old man Roger should probably monitor them better. But instead, he was playing poker with us. The three of you walk right past Sword, not expecting them to be just like off to the side by the door. Sword, you watch your three friends walk past you, but kind of trailing along after them, uh, and you can see that they're making like yeah, 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 kind of faces as Selkris, you know, uh, calls them out. 
you see uh, a very familiar face uh, wearing uh, green robes, uh, a very short uh, a figure of short statue. Uh, you see Roger the gnome. Uh, except he's kind of got, uh, he looks like older and more wise wizened. Uh, and he has a uh, kind of a, a proper white wizard's beard as he follows up. It's like, ah, oh, well, you know. <laughs> I, yeah, I, blah, 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 to you too. <laughs> you know, there's, there's something really bad about you and Bartholomew, rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just that you mumble so much, half the time I don't even know what you're saying. Uh, well, you actually, can't understand that? I meant to talk to you all about that, but. um, And Roger has stopped as Korogon, you, you guys have kept walking. And I imagine, Lance, your path perception so damn high, you've also noticed, sort. And Sword, do you do anything as they're walking by, or are you just kind of standing there observing? My Why passive does perception he look so is... old? <laughs> hmm? My passive perception is a 14, to be fair. Yeah, yeah well, in, and his Sword kind of says, Why does he look so old? <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. You all now see Sword. And... Okay, so... Oh, Sword, get awake! Whoa! Uh, I, was, I was wondering when you'd wake up. Um... Hi, Sword. It's it's me, Roger. I'm sure you recognize everyone else. I recognize you, but why are you so old? That He's is old. A very, very long story, but we don't have a lot of time to talk right now. Yeah, he got absorbed by the calculor. Don't worry about it. I got absorbed by the calculor. Um, we can talk more about what the calculor is later, but as I was telling you all, I'd be rushed down here in the first place. There's kind of a very short-term opportunity right now we need to take advantage of. I've already sent um, Fox and the others who've just awoken, Fox, Silius, uh, and Ideal. I sent them with you, Chonkus. Switch is here? Oh, man. He should have should have oh. let me say hi. It was kind of a rush. I mean, look, uh, but anyway, what I was saying, um, Sword, you're familiar with the back room in the shop? Yeah, the one that uh yeah. when you kept all his rare stuff. Well, yeah, that one. one. Of the, we've gotten a track. We're on the moon right now, um, and this is something of a, a, a moon base that Bartholomew conjured into existence. But using some of the scrying systems on here, we've we've gotten a, a, a trace of that seed, of that magical signature. Um, yep. Yes, it's kind of split off. I think it's infested two other, two beings, two creatures um, down on the planet, uh, down in the land of D&D time. And I need you all to go down and I need you to recover well, one of those, something from one of those creatures. If we can get a powerful enough magical conduit, we can use that with the scrying. If you ever scried before, you know, if you have a thing that's like the thing you're trying to find, it's mm -hmm. easier. Well, the, the systems work the same way. If you can bring me something magical from it, I can put that into the, the, the moon base and hopefully we should be able to get a permanent lock on the And that should make it a lot easier for us to get it in the future. Mm, okay, this, this you sure? kind of important. Um, Oh, goodness. The rest of you are going to need to explain this. And, Sword, Yeah, we we'll explain it on the way. Uh, we can br I can brief you on it later, but effectively, the lands down there is... Well, they are not a nice place right now. Um, there are great evils that have taken a hold and... Yeah, there's like eight of them. Yeah, there's a lot to talk about, but this is kind of a, a sensitive, a time-sensitive mission. We need to get everyone down there as quickly as we can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I don't now, what know. are we waiting for? Uh, Let's go. You, you ready? Someone get your gear together. I yeah, go get your gear. Where is it? Over this oh. way. Come on. Yeah, it's right ahead. You all uh, lead Sword to the to the uh, the room and get him geared up. I'll go and get the arcing catapults calibrated. Where are you doing it? And Roger, Roger, kind of goes yeah and starts like scooting off. Um, but Sword, yeah, your your friends uh, kind of lead you around the station. They seem very familiar with the place. Like they've been here for a while. Um, they lead you down a set of corridors and hallways, and you vaguely remember these from your boss battle. It's like, ah, yes, this is a thing that was there, but it was all destroyed in the boss battle or in the battle. Yeah, battle like, I destroy that core with the 
you know, after here. Lance got... Oh, you're talking about the movie. Uh, that was good. You guys did good. Yeah, surprisingly <laughs> better than I thought. Uh, what do you think about my death? Was it too traumatic? Yeah, how about mine? Was it good? Which do you think was the best death? Um... You died what you do, uh, did love, what you love doing best. Mm. You died like a space cowboy. Emmy? I was talking about you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, we saw the movie, you know. Yeah, we were there. <laughs> kind watching. of. <laughs> and as, as they try to explain this to you, uh, they bring you down into this one large chamber. Uh, it appears to be like a cafeteria. It's very big. Like, it has enough room to fit way more people than you do. There are lo hundreds of tables around, like just boring metal tables and chairs. But they bring you over to the wall where there's like a little... Um, almost like if you like a mailbox like opening thing. If you've ever been to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, if you've ever sent mail, which you probably have, given you're a person, um, <laughs> on the wall. And you, as you approach it, uh, you hear kind of this robotic, almost Bartholomew voice uh, that, says, that greets you. Uh, ah, sword, would you like your equipment? Yes, please. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should warn you now. Um... Voice recognition authorized. Yes. Yeah. So, you are definitely in a tube. That is because everything that you remember experiencing up until the last battle was in this big illusion thing. I mean, it really happened at one point, but... Bartholomew's dead. Yes, that. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Reality and creative license do tend to blend in the illusion. Mm, yeah, I guess so. You hear some like gears shifting in this in the plain metal wall, and then a little light bling, kind of glows, a little green light glows on the uh, on the little drop box. And as you pull it open, oh, it's got all your stuff in it. Yeah, go get dressed. I'll turn around, and she turns around. So you know, the, essentially, the eight great evils rose up, defeated Bartholomew. It was a bad time, killed him. And Absorbed now Roger. As, yeah, they, as you say all this stuff, the uh, the voice hologram of Bartholomew uh, intrudes. Actually, it's simply conjecture. There's no. Don't argue with me, old man. Wait, there is no evidence of that. So what you're saying is Bartholomew can still be alive? Wait, are you a Bartholomew lacrum? Yeah, he's probably not dead. The. the uh... The voice oh, not physically because knowing that that dodgy old man, he's probably got like some kind of time loop where he's like he's kept Killing? this like conscious Killing? frozen in time or something and I don't know. He's he's being a bad all powerful wizard letting these evils roam the land. We got the the green sun coat, we got the weird fashion. Maybe this is all a test. Maybe what we were in a simulation inside a simulation. I, I really don't think that's the case, because if we die now, we die for real. You know that. But we haven't died, so we don't know that for sure. I nominate Sword to be our guinea pig. Well, well, well I'm not saying we go and die. Well, you I'm just saying. Did die, just a note. Oh. All oh, oh, right, that did happen. Brought him back. I forgot about that. Yes, that did happen. Yeah. Oh, but sorry. I, well, I guess that rolls up my... He died for like a minute. I don't think that counts. As you're having this conversation, and uh, sort of, you're kind of taking it all in, and you're 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 all geared up now. You got all your stuff. Uh, you hear Roger's voice, kind of, and you see where the voice is coming from here. It's coming out of like a little box on the wall with um, a kind of mesh grid speaker, basically, um, some advanced trigonometric technology, of course. And you hear Roger's voice. Um, uh, are, are you all making your way down to the the hangar? We need to get going. Uh, all right. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sword, are you dressed? You understand. Dress. Uh, yes. Okay, let's go. Let's go, yes. Upsy's curse. Well, not the waist. Okay, let's go. Uh, I put so crest on my shoulder. Faster. I, I need you at a, like, a light jog. Let's go. Okay, fine, fine. And I am jogging now. Double face it is then. Okay. 
Sword, did you just follow them out? Yep. <laughs> Likewise to your passage so far, uh, the travel that they make, you know, the path they take, you know this. You've walked this before on your way to the quote-unquote hangar in the battle against Bartholomew uh, just a few hours earlier. But when you get to the hangar this time, it's not as cool. There's not a huge, like, laser turret. There aren't space, you know, suits or anything. Instead, there is just a big tube and a bunch of glass spheres. And that tube is kind of like pointed out uh, just into space. And you see space. You see the lands of D&D time, which is a weird, not planet shape. It's like a convex plane, which is really weird. Um, but you see the lands of D&D time just floating in black starry night. Uh, and you see the sun, which glows with a terrible sickly green. And uh, well, that's uh, and there's also kind of being devoured by a tentacle thing. Yeah, right. You, you, as you stare at it, you see what looks like almost the lashing of a tentacle, where what would be like a solar flare that seems to be almost growing all around the sides of the sun, threatening to consume its very. Yeah, the green no, sun a, uh, Yeah, saying it don't take a genius to figure out who's behind that. Yeah, <laughs> it's hmm, eating the I sun. wonder who it is. Yeah, it's eating the sun. That's bad news. Ah. Karagan, I thought you knew it's the green sun. Well, I'll tell it. I am about to smack you upside the head. <laughs> I was kidding. All right, I've got everything dialed in. It looks like, yes, the first group headed over here, and oh boy. Hmm? Um, all right. What? Well, I've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is I've been able to, I think, guess the trajectory of this, whatever this thing is moving yes. through the swamp. The bad news is it's heading directly for Slaughter Murder's old tower. Well... We cannot allow that to happen. You know, I'm surprised it's still standing after everything that's happened. I am pretty sure that Slaughter Murder would not be okay with it. Well, I've actually talked to Clint a lot in the last couple of weeks, and we've got a lot to talk to you about, actually. Um, but I guess until then, if you all just get inside of one of the arcane catapults, we can launch you down to the surface. Yep, let's do it. <laughs> all right, you ready, Sword? Let's and, go. And Sword, we can talk more and get you up to date on everything and what's happening here, but right now, this is just incredibly time sensitive. There's really not, nothing. Yeah, we have to go. We're, we're getting in, and she just pulls him in. <laughs> okay. All right, make sure everyone buckles up. You all ready? There's not, there's not a seatbelt on this thing. No, as, as you turn and like say that, Sal Chris, you realize, wait, he can't, well, well, the glass, uh, ball, like side of the arcane catapult, of the little glass spheres that are the, that get launched by the arcane catapult, when it's closed, people outside can't hear you. So he just sees you like mouthing words to him. He goes, all right. And he hits the button and boom, it launches <laughs> out of the side of the space station. Uh, you get bounced all over the place. <laughs> to be fair, I am holding her. So. Yeah. Exactly. Kurogan ready for this. This crowd. is normal. Uh, and <laughs> I know this is my first time being launched in these things. <laughs> you uh, fly through space and d directly toward the lands of D and D time. Uh, the immediately the sounds of the ship disappear. The beeping and the lights gone in but an instant as you whip toward the planet's surface. There's a sudden, almost heat that begins to warm up around this glass sphere as you start to enter into the atmosphere of the lands of D&D &D time. And as you quickly descend toward the surface of the Baradak Swamp, suddenly everything just kind of boom, stops as though affected by a featherfall spell, and you just kind of slowly land upon the surface, safe and sound. And yeah, you're currently standing on, in well, not standing, but sitting in this glass sphere uh, in the Baradax Swamp. You know, I've been thinking, we might do well to invest in recording perhaps a, like, orientation guide film or something of the like. I feel like Sword might be a bit confused by all of these rapid explanations. Uh, we'll do that Not after. Not really. The old clearing like, clear on a lot of the stuff he was doing anyways. Oh, see, he's fine. Oh, fair enough. He's a smart boy, he's fine. All right, now let's hurry up and go. We gotta beat up a guy. 
or whatever. You open the glass sphere and step out onto the Baradak Swamp. This is a place you haven't been yet. None of you have. And you can see that it's different than you maybe remember it. While still a vast swamp with only the occasional jagged dead tree reaching up from it, it appears to be, well, even more devoid of life than you remember it. There are no buzzing of insects and croaking of frogs. And the ground is almost crusty. It's cold, Mm. and the top layer of the muck appears to be hardened and stiff. But with enough force, for example, a creature, the mass of Kurogon leaping down into it, it kind of breaks and cracks like ice, and your feet land in cold mud and Yeah, that's only happening for a few seconds as Kurogon activates his uh, crest and starts flying with uh, saw crest on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't want the gross mud on me. You feel a Are we in the Duke's territory? Is that that where we are? I thought he took over the Candy Cane Mountain. I thought the Duke was up in the um, Candy Mountain. Yeah, that's what I just said. The Candy Mountains, yeah, they they do border the Baradak Swamp on kind of the northeast. Mm. But, and you can see them probably in the distance, barely. So maybe influenced by himself. Yeah, must mean we're close to his territory. Well, Crushing fingers beyond where they belong. Oh, crap. They belong in the ground. Well, either way, th- th- we have to take care of this thing before we go attacking Mr. Winter or whatever. Yeah. I think Bartholomew said that the seed was associated with him, maybe. Probably gonna have to get Roger to do more research in it, but let's let's find the thing that we're supposed to kill. Well, up ahead of you, you see Clinton Slaughter Murder's Tower. It looks like that was something that Roger could, like, lock on to. Uh, the rest of you are aware that trying to like connect with things on the surface is very difficult one or more of the evils is interfering with uh planar travel and i guess the moon counts as a different plane than the land of deity time um but yeah um this must have been something that he could connect with so yeah you see just a couple hundred feet a leaning kind of crooked stone tower um it's kind of in the distance there did it always used to lean like that? Uh, yeah. More or less. It looks this is much... my, my first time being here. I, I've never seen it. Yeah, more or less. Well, do we want to go hunting this thing? I doubt we well, want to set up a siege. Roger said that uh, it was headed this way, so I figure if we wait around here, it'll come to us. Won't that put the tower at unnecessary peril? Mm, well, we can like wait around outside and then go super attack it. Pew pew. You hear Roger's Roger voice because you're this... still standing right next to the orb. Roger's voice. Ah, I figured that maybe you could find something useful inside that might help you. Oh, what's a good idea? Let's go with that. And uh, and Krogan starts flying towards the tower. <laughs> Yeah. Selkros will ride along. Lance okay. will slowly trick his way through the frosty muck. Yeah, it's like every other step a foot like sinks through the or breaks through the kind of frosted over surface and it just ugh. You okay good. back there, Lance? Sword? We'll live. Indeed. Well, as you start to kind of trudge monotonously toward this stone tower. I think you mean floating over. <laughs> and and fly. Uh, Sword, I'd like you to roll me a wisdom saving throw as the the sickening kind of influence of the green sun kind of uh, beads down upon you. Holy crap. But Damn. as this sense of unease and worry begins to settle in, you... I've done worse things for Bartholomew, you think. This is just par for the course. And the influence of the sun seems to look you by. 
Do we? Do the rest of us still feel pretty hopeless every time we're under the sun? Yeah, the rest of you, since you all failed your saving throws when you first came down to the land of D and D time, the rest of you still feel that just unease, that almost like dread and. Uh, uh, yeah. I so hate that sun. It feels uh, gross. Can we handle them soon? Maybe? I'm getting tired of that sun. Such a hassle to destroy that sun. <sighs> we're not going to destroy the sun. We're going to destroy the cultists. No, we're going to destroy I mean, the thing eating the well sun. I mean, that, yeah. Corrupted beyond sea. If we destroy the sun, I'm pretty sure we will all die. But yeah. if we destroy the thing eating the sun, that's a different story. Well, we'll get to that eventually. Anyway, go to tower. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, as... is the elithid head still on the door frame? Yeah. As you get up to the door, you look at it. There appears to be a kind of frozen over uh, head of a mind flare that's mounted right on the front. I say frozen over, it just has a little bit of, like, frost on it. It's not really, like, a block of ice or anything. I wonder um, if that thing's still alive. The rest of you remember, this is what the Clinton Slaughter murder used as his, uh, his door knocker. Kara, gonna touch it. Why is it always me you ask to touch it? Touch it. I'm going, going to, like, blurring people around. I'm going to gently pocket with my immovable rod. <laughs> You gonna poke it? Yeah. With my immovable rod. <laughs> uh, okay. Roll me a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, as you kind of poke it with the immovable rod, the tentacles <laughs> whip to life and lash forward. They grasp onto the rod and pull it from your grasp. And now there's an immovable rod just sticking out of this creature's, out of this uh, decapitated head's mouth. Yep. Get it back! It's still alive. Fabulous! Like, Give it like back! Lashed out. It seems rather hungry. Mm, I'm sure Clint hasn't fed it in a long time. Um, uh, what, do, what do elephants eat? Mines. Well, I can't exactly give it a mind. <laughs> Well, don't give it a mind. Let's just it still ignore has it. Your <laughs> Let's I'm try going to try to take her. it back. I want it back. Well, Kurgan's doing that, so Chris is just going to open the door and go inside. Uh, unfortunately, you tr go to open the door and it kook, it doesn't open, and that's because the mouth of the mind flare has accidentally hit the button for the immovable rod, <laughs> and it is currently stuck in place. I am giving. I'm getting that thing back. I'm going to click the button and get it back. You're going to reach into the mind player's mouth and try and get it back. Very much ready to stab it in the face if need. Okay. Uh, the mind player head attacks you. Uh, an 18? Will that hit you? It will not. <laughs> okay. So as you reach in, you feel the tentacles immediately like wrap up your arm and like try and reach toward your head as you uh, click the uh, the uh, button on the rod, disengaging it and pulling it out. You pull away, but that was, like, kind of close, and it, like, continues to lash out toward you for a few seconds, and then kind of... I'm going to stab this thing if it does that again. Okay, okay. Down, down bad, bad lizard head. Let's just go inside now. You've got your rod! Wait, wait, wait. Before we go in there, if, if the elephant head is so hungry that it was snapping off an immovable... Is that not going to mean that all the furniture is ravenously hungry as well? Mm. Well, I'm getting out my great sword. <laughs> <laughs> Me. Does anyone here have like a lot of meat on them, or was that just always <laughs> in your chunkus stomachs? Jeez, if you chunkus was here, we'd have meat. <laughs> not that he'd share. I don't know. He seems to be pretty uh, keen on sharing that yak meat. I've got honey. Honey. <laughs> you know I have a bee farm. Oh yeah. From your jar of bees. Yes. You have a lot of bees. The mead market. Uh, not yet. We don't really have a supply of meat. 
no, you're no, me. You're coming outside uh, of this tower, right? Having this conversation. Uh, oh, me, the meat. Uh, so is just gonna open the door. Yeah, we're gonna go open ahead. the door now. She wants to go pet the couch. You you open the door, Sal Chris, and as you kind of look past it, I think all of you can see the inside of Clinton Slaughter Murders Tower. Uh, there are a couple of things that strike you, obviously, as you you look in. First is directly ahead of you, as always, there's a staircase. It kind of curves around the right side of the tower, leading upward into a higher chamber. I don't think any of you have ever been up there, but you've always. To the left is the main living room of, of, the, uh, of the tower. Mm-hmm. In that, you can see on the far wall, there is a very, very large brick fireplace, uh, which, you know, can double as a portal to the Nine Hells, assuming it still functions. I wonder if that's still Additionally, there. you can see what is a very nice old kind of uh, purple leather-bound couch. Uh, you're very familiar with this couch, Selkris. Uh, it's got like the big kind of curved um, ornate uh, feet to it that rise it up, up above the ground. Couch, uh, are you are you alive? You, well, just a sec. You see the sarcophagus <laughs> that doubles as the dinner table in the middle of the room. Uh, oh. You can see all along the walls there are small knickknacks and other paraphernalia uh, for detailing, you know, a uh, religious iconography of terrible evil gods. And most importantly, in the very middle of the room, you see strewn just on the floor uh, what look like broken bones of a a fair number of them, like a person's worth of just mangled broken bones. Uh, They're very old and they're covered with a thin layer of dust. What would you all like to do? So, Christine, just immediately call out? Or yeah, she's going to jump, call out to the that. couch. Well, okay. I, <laughs> I've i got my great sword out, and I'm ready to slice anyone, who, <laughs> anything that might attack. Also, um, so I've got one point in the wings. I'm going to put four points in uh, probably, probably the dragon's hide for now. Okay. No, I'm gonna do Dragon's Fire. Never mind. Or, yeah, Dragon's Fire. Uh, uh, I'm just going to use my bonus action and summon the treats with my uh, Hornet's Nest. Ah, you summon a wonderful uh, honey treat. Delightful. Delightful is true. It's delightful. (laughs) Uh, The couch, you see it stir. Uh, as it kind of awakens. This is not your normal couch. This is uh, a mimic or an animated something of some kind. The cushions almost lift up like a mouth and two kind of eyes open up in the kind of uh, back corners where the cushions would meet to the back uh, side of the couch. And it looks toward you. It has like rows of of razor sharp teeth inside of it, Uh, like several rows, like a shark's mouth. Um, under the cushions, and it opens its eyes and kind of looks toward you, Selkris, as you call out its name, and it, like, you see, like, a, a frenzy almost in its eyes, and I'd like you to roll me an animal handling check with advantage, <laughs> because of your history with the couch. <laughs> Alright, um, cool. She's terrible at this, but not too bad. The couch uh, begins to, like, scramble forward on its four wooden legs toward you all. Uh, Do any of you do anything right off the bat? I mean, I I toss one of the uh, honey treats in its mouth. You toss honey treat to it. I am preparing to attack it if it looks like it's about to be hostile towards... Well, it's Any right of us. rushing toward you at like a, a, a very quick speed. Are Does you, it uh, look hostile though? Hard. To I, mean, I mean, it's, it's hard to tell. Through? It's a mimic. If its teeth are about to wrap what's, around what, Selkress or any of us, what's your insight bonus? My insight bonus is a zero because so I'm not very insightful. Insight, your passive insight's a ten, so you can't tell if this thing is like, oh, I'm really happy to see you, or oh my god, I'm so hungry. You can't tell. Well, if it looks like it's about to wrap its teeth around any of us, it's getting oh. sliced. So if it attacks someone... Yes, if it attacks it someone, I will attack it. Gotcha. And, and Does... meanwhile, Selkris so, so will kind of throw herself at it. I'm sorry, Lance? 
does it look like it's happy to see Saltcrest or happy to see food? What's your passive insight? My passive insight is 18. 18? All right, you're a little more insightful than Kurokan. Uh, no offense, Kurokan. You're good <laughs> at other things, kids. like being very strong. Yes, I am strongest. <laughs> and I guess flying, too, which is a pretty good one. Yes, I am um, a dragon, after all. You saw the immediate reaction Lance was like, oh, food. But now, as, like, it sees Selkris and it's rushing forward, that doesn't seem to be quite the immediate reaction. It's more of, like, a recognition, you'd think. I'll step forward right behind Silcrest to pet couch since it's been <laughs> very long time. The couch uh, runs toward you, Silcrest, and you throw yourself to it. Uh, and rather than, it's like lunging toward you almost like it's going to bite you, but it doesn't. Instead, it like comes up to you and like nuzzles you like a, a sad lost pet uh, and begins to almost like purr, but also kind of whine like it's sad. Oh, we need to bring these guys back up! Just, but uh, as you kind of pet it a couple of times and it uh, it nuzzles you as it is the couch, uh, <laughs> it is distracted for a moment by the, the honey treat, and its eyes like look at you, Selkris, and look at the honey treat, and look at you and look at the honey treat on the ground. She'll and nod it, at it. <laughs> and like, well, and it like keeps nuzzling you, but it also sticks out its long tongue, which you've never seen before. <laughs> it's got a long, like, probably like foot wide mm -hmm. human like tongue uh, that it sticks out and just kind of like oh, reaches out and grabs the honey treat i'm gonna feed she it some honey it. <laughs> uh it ravenously goes at the honey as you start pouring it into its mouth <laughs> yeah just uh, open up trash can insert honey uh and it kind of makes them like <laughs> like Aww. sounds like it's trying to talk to you all Aww. But none of you speak whatever language this is. It's couch. He speaks couch. <laughs> Might be couch. <laughs> so but Chris yeah. knows couch. <laughs> okay, so you, you comfort the couch. The couch doesn't attack you. Uh, yeah. So Chris is very happy to see the couch again. Is it still fluffy? It's soft. Uh, huh? Is, is the couch... Fluffy? Yeah, and soft. It's a couch. Um... Yeah, it's still pretty uh, fluffy and soft. It yes. looks like it, at some point it has been actually reupholstered. So instead of having like a nice soft, it has almost a, a kind of purple dyed leather, uh, which is not as soft, but it's still just as comfy because it's just as cushy. Yeah. Well, Silkris disapproves of the change, but she, hmm. she still pets the couch. Okay. Uh, All right. We sort should probably of, it, look for that thing that Roger told us about. You're watching all of your friends pet a couch. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's alive. A horrible toothy couch. <laughs> He's quite friendly once you give him a few pats. Don't worry. Well, I'm also gonna start laying out some honey for any for all the other mimics that are definitely around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you only have so much honey, I'll say. Like, really, you, you do only have so much on you at the moment. Uh, well, of course, like, but you, I'm you living some out. Bag of holding, right? I uh, do not have the item bag of holding, no. Or or comparable thing, right? No, yeah, I don't have anything like that, unfortunately. Yeah. Why did I never get that? <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's, your chunk is like one of the only characters with a bag of holding. <laughs> it's really weird that such a common, like, staple magic item is so rare in the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, as you're uh, all kind of, kind of nuzzling and cuddling with the couch, uh, there's a kind of um, another, there's a, an archway that leads into another room, or doorway, rather, but there's no door on it. And you know that leads into the kitchen. Um, and you hear, like, a crashing of metal from the other room, like something <laughs> falls over. Hmm? And the couch oh pauses and looks over. Kuran, battle formation! And he immediately goes into battle formation, which is basically just standing with his legs wide open, a shield in front of him, and a sword up, ready to pounce on whatever's about to attack us. <laughs> so Chris is enjoying her little thing. You know, ever since you guys did the we're, we're really cool in that movie, I've been, I've been on a sci-fi kick for a little bit. Okay. 
you guys form a battle formation. Sword, lance, did you do anything? Uh, I'll, I'll fall into the form. I'll ready my shield and uh, ready another treat in case there's another. Okay. Sword, you you have more of those treats, right? I, I do yeah, I've got nine really. more. They're like basically good bear. Oh, at least that will fill their belly. As you uh, all kind of ready yourselves and you look into the, like toward that doorway into the kitchen, nothing comes out. Well, so Chris well I'm is approaching gonna, the door. So. Yeah, so Chris is going to nudge Kurogan forward. Okay. Kurogan, you approach the doorway and you peek around and look down and there's a small, hall, a short hallway in this room. Uh, past this doorway. Um, to the right is the short hallway. There's uh, a couple of rooms down there. You think one might be their cupboard or something. Uh, one might lead to like the, the cellar below. Um, and one doorway and that down that little hall leads outdoors, back door to the tower. But to your left, as you look down, you see the kitchen. There's uh, old dust covered uh, m- uh, white and gray marble countertops. You know, there are cabinets. There are uh, all sorts of things. Uh, there is the the sink, which you're familiar with uh, intimately. It's a very scary place. <laughs> um, no kidding. Um, oh, but as you look down, nothing. You don't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. There are utensils like hanging from hooks and things uh, under cabinets. But yeah, no movement of any kind. Uh, anything like out of place? Like what? Is anything on the floor? Anything metallic? I guess. Yeah. Roll me a perception check. Right. Do you think Clint would want us to retrieve his spatula? You look I mean... around, Selkris, and uh, yeah, uh, on the far uh, side of the of this room, this room's only about maybe 20 feet long. I mean, it's like a narrow but long room. You can see right past the oven, there's a knife out on the counter that doesn't appear to be covered in dust. Hmm... So Chris narrows her eyes at it and points it out. So there's a knife there that's undusty, which means it was used recently. I start looking for other signs of uh kicked up. Looking up for more signs of uh of stuff. Go ahead and also roll me a perception check then, sorry. Are there any foot? Prints in the dust? No. no. I'm also probably looking around to help. Okay, you can also roll. And, <laughs> I mean, Lance, I assume you're also looking to go ahead and give me one too. Everyone Where's... rolls a perception check. Damn it. Where's uh, Switch when you need him to do a divine sniff? <laughs> uh, Lance, uh, you see everything that everyone else saw. The all of you saw the knife out of the way. Uh, but you also noticed that the there's like a big kind of metal tube that's like the vent for the oven uh, that like goes up and connects to the wall. You notice it's detached from the wall. Perhaps the oven's been about. It seems to have detached itself from the wall there. I will point handedly. Uh, as you say that, the oven springs to life and I'd like you all to roll for initiative. Sure. I was very prepared for something like yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Sure. No one is surprised. Uh, oh, come on. What is that initiative? Okay. Uh, oven mimic. <laughs> Quick feed it. Everybody's just... Animated spatula. <laughs> Animated <Jeez>. knife. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? Oh, Damn it, Clint. Man. Stop bringing random objects to life. <laughs> he gives Except life. the couch, you can keep the couch alive. Alrighty, and oh, Kurogan bringing up the rear. All right, yeah, and, he's uh, slow. When we get to this point, I would like you all to uh, actually wait. What did I just say? You already just did that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would like the knife to go first because he rolled highest. There we okay. go. There you oh, go. Oh boy, brain is full of of big brain today. Mm-hmm. Brain is go. The uh, the knife. Uh, whoops, that was the wrong song. Oh, it stopped automatically. Thanks, roll twenty. 
God, Roll20's been awful today. Uh, all right, the knife f- springs to life, uh, flying into the air from its resting place upon the uh, upon the counter, and it flies forward toward the first person, which I think is Kurogon, right? It's Kurogon. Hey, it's Kurogon. Kurogon. The knife, it's like, it's being wielded like someone was holding it, like, to stab the way it's floating, uh, and it stabs down. Uh, how much? How many times does it stab down at you? Three times. And I go, stab, stab, stab! As the knife shanks down at you. A 25, a 20, and an 11 to hit. A 25, I can't block. All right. Uh, It does does not do bludgeoning damage. It does uh, slashing damage. I mean, I imagined it would. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I will, uh... I'm not even gonna... (laughs) <laughs> I'm just gonna take the, the little bit of damage. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, For the nice. 25 and the 20. Uh, okay. The 11, it's nowhere near. <laughs> the spatula uh, also springs to life, flying up from the ground. Uh, and what's it gonna do? Uh, it is going to kind of spin around in the air a little bit. Uh, and it is going to cast a spell. What? Uh, do you, are any of you gonna do anything? Is it clearly casting a spell, or are you gonna just let it go? The knife is casting a spell? The spatula. The spatula. Yep. Okay. The spatula whoops around in the air. Clearly a magic wand. Is casting y- a spell. Yes, yeah, Selkris does, raises an eyebrow, maybe. Okay, but no, no counter I, I'm going to shove one of those treats in his mouth. Well, on your turn, you can try and do that for certain sword, but for now, the spatula is going mad. Well, I can't do anything about it, then I can't do anything. All right, so spatula is going to cast the spell. I'd like all of you, because I think you're all grouped together uh, at this point, right? Because you're all kind of grouped by the entrance right now. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Uh, to roll me a dexterity saving throw as a cone of fire waves out over you. What? Uh, why's it got to be dex? <laughs> dexterity saving throw. It's burning hands. Seventeen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, the DC is, uh, is 13. Okay, cool. <laughs> I succeed. Uh, also, I'm resistant to fire damage, so it's I take a quarter damage. Alrighty. Sword, it looks like uh, you, you were the only one who failed, unfortunately. As you were kind of in the back, and it was hard to see everyone, uh, what was going on. And it does 16 points of fire damage if you fail or have So, four for me. <laughs> yes. Uh, as the, the special casts Burning Hands. The next in the initiative, Selkris. What would you like uh, to do? Well, she doesn't have any food on her. Mm-hmm. Actually, she does. But I don't know if they work like good berries. Mm-hmm. Does the bowl of candy work like good berries? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you, have, you have the bowl of candy, don't you? I do. Uh, oh, boy. Souls 19. Let's see what the bowl of candy does. All right. It's a bowl, bowl of candy, of candy has that 10 heals. Charges. Yep. Yep. It's an action. You can give uh, some candy. It does not work like Goodberry. It does not instantly satiate. However, it is some candy, so it might help. I mean, I could also give the, the bubble gum a flying, but it's already... Oh, but then everyone would need some bubble gum. Well, I only have one stick, so... Oh, that's fair. Anyway, uh, I guess Silkress will bath it. <laughs> okay, you're gonna attack the spatula. Are you trying to grab the spatula or bludgeon the spatula or spell the spatula? I'm gonna spell the spatula. Okay. Um, I think she still has two of these, so one bat. All right, one Eldritch Blast unfortunately goes wide. It's a very fast little spatula. Second blast goes wide. Hmm. Spatula well, pretty quick. She will, she will have Levi sting the spatula then with its yep. tail. Levi comes out of invisibility just behind it and stings at it. Yep. Yeah. Ugh. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, it does not with advantage either because the spatula has blind sight. So, unfortunate miss as Levi stings at the spatula too. A series of unfortunate rolls. Man, a, a two, a five, and a two. Yeah, well, get out, getting out of the way now with the, with the <laughs> easy stuff. There's a the positivity. Yep, that's good. Yeah, so Chris right. doesn't really know how to deal. 
<laughs> right? Couldn't think they're attacking me. Lance, it's your move. Uh, there's a spatula and a knife, and you can swear you see the rumblings in the oven. Now, we've been here several times. Spatula, knife, oven, down. We'll feed you. And as I uh, cut them, I will bane. Ooh, 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 okay. Excellent. So these are charisma saving throws. They all have one charisma, so I'm not going to roll for them. They fail. <laughs> okay. Uh, they're all Yeah, still Chris chimes in and is like, yeah, Couch would be really disappointed with you guys. In the other room, Couch is shaking its head. <laughs> all right. Metaphorical head. <laughs> yeah, it's, met- it's, it's the whole couch is shaking, but you all know. It raises a, 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 a pillow like an eyebrow. Uh, anything else you'd like to do, Lance, as you have baned all of them and tutted them thoroughly? I will take a step back so I'm not in a nasty little oven cluster. Okay. Um, Sword, it's your move. It's very cramped here at this opening still. Uh, Lance, I assume you didn't step back into the living room, did you? Because you'd be out of sight if you did that, but you also wouldn't have line of sight. Um, is there the hallway here where I can kind of step oh, around yeah. the edge? Absolutely, you can step back into the hallway and still be in and have line of sight. But yeah, I'll just step back like that. Okay, cool. cool. Well, oh, sorry, sorry, now it's your move. Uh, nice healing word on everybody. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> Boop. I, I have been boop. Oh, wow. 14 hit points for the for the Thanks. Pile. It's wonderful. Lord, that was only a bonus action. Would you like to do anything with your action? I'll give the oven a treat. <laughs> Excellent. You're going to take out one of your treats and just toss it over to the oven? Uh, yeah, roll me an animal handling check for your treat. <laughs> oh, no. oh, my God. Uh, uh because it's the oven's turn now, so I think what happens in, in the lore here... Are you moving at all, by the way, Sword? Yeah, I'll move off to the side. Okay, back in the living room or backwards with Lance? Just off to the side where I'm not, like, in... You know, a... Gotcha, sure. Uh, so you're kind of in the door frame, just as close as you can without, yeah, being in the way. Uh, I think what happens is as you throw the treat, the oven begins to and it's like, it's cast iron feet clang against the ground uh, as it runs forward toward you, Kurogan. Uh, and I think what happens is as it kind of opens its mouth, you see like a fire wave just kind of glow up inside of it, and it disintegrates the treat, and it's like, oh. Um, and Kurogan. Aw, poor uh, treat. It goes to bite you. Uh, now this actually is bludgeoning damage. Uh, a six nope. <laughs> will miss. Okay, so it doesn't bite you, uh, and then it belches fire forward uh, after it tries to bite. Boom! Uh, I need Selkris and Kurogan, uh, both of you, to roll me dexterity saves. DC is only ten, but what is that? Come on, guys! Unfortunate rolling is what it is. Uh, it's gonna be 19 fire damage. So uh, half so, of that. Oh yeah, how much half. is half of that? Nine. We Wait. always ran down on that. So it tries. At, you figure if you had been grappled and bitten by this, you probably would have just auto failed. Uh, but the oven tries to chomp at you. Um, alrighty, that's all the oven's got for now. Colonel God, it's your turn. Uh, okay. Um. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess we're doing this, so I'm just gonna cast Shatter at fourth level. Oh, jeez. At everything in the room. Oh my god, are you gonna blow well, Avoiding the- us, but you know. Okay. So I had a bit, but yeah. So here, here's a Shatter at fourth level. Okay. Whoo, boy. All right, girl, gun. you let out a Shatter. Uh, I just snap my fingers and the room explodes. Spatula, knife. Oven mimic. Okay, so the spatula and knife suffer no damage as they have uh, the avoidance property. If they succeed on a do they have throw. disadvantage because they're awakened objects? Oh, you're right. Shit, because uh, that uh-huh. is that how shatter works? They have disadvantage against it. Uh, let me check shatter. 
I think that's it. Yeah, that, that uh, objects have disadvantage, right? Well, I believe good. so. Non-magical object that isn't being worn will automatically take damage. Mm -hmm. Uh... A creature that is made of inorganic material, such as crystal or metal, has disadvantage on the save. Ah, uh, yep, there it is. Man. Good call. Yep. Smart I mean, man. <laughs> all right, so the spatula will actually fail, and the knife will succeed. Okay, so the knife avoids it. The spatula gets wrecked. Uh, yeah, the spatula blows up and collapses on the ground. It's, it's destroyed. Um, it was a spatula. Um, it had, like, what, three health points? <laughs> it had one. What else for you? The, uh, right. <laughs> the oven mimic also failed. Uh, it is going to 29 points of thunder damage. Uh, it is pretty uh, badly damaged. It's weird because, like, it's not bloody in any way, but you see, like, the door of it's hanging off, and it's the, the little stack that would vent out uh, fumes to the outside. It's just blown off completely. It's in bad shape. Yeah, starting starting to crack. Um... Yeah, probably. The cast iron looks pretty tough, to be honest. Uh, you'd have a hard time getting getting many physical attacks onto that. But. Well, this is thunder damage, so... Oh, yeah. so <laughs> meant to destroy things. It is. Uh, <laughs> specifically designed for maximum destruction of objects. Poor spatula. All right. Uh, we didn't get to flip any of you. Um, is that the end of your turn, Karogan? Yep, that's an action. I don't really need to use a bonus action, so. All right. The knife stabs at you four times. One, two, three, four. Oh, a natural 20 for a 20. I'm not letting the 24 in. I'll shield for the rest of them. <laughs> you don't have to because he is Bane. Oh, well, you oh. oh excellent call I there. probably don't. So it's actually only a 21. I still have to shield then, but still. Oh. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, but I will take the 12 slashing damage. And actually, does Bane affect their saving throws, Lance? It does indeed. Oh, it does indeed. Oh, should it do so it indeed, maybe though? Maybe I should roll a Bane for the knife. Probably a good uh, idea. Because the knife actually doesn't stab you because it doesn't exist anymore. It it, yeah, the there shadow. it goes. So because no damage. That's the good. Knife, the knife had four hit points. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right, it so there totally is no would have survived. It was a trick. Uh, and I actually forgot to mention, the rest of the kitchen is in absolute shambles. You've obliterated yeah. most of the yeah. cabinetry. Plates just fall and shatter on the ground. Oh, they probably shatter mid-fall. Uh, I literally snapped them out of existence. Um, yeah, they are they are crushed. Um, that being said, something does happen when you shatter like that because it's very loud. Um, all right. Oh yeah, that creature we have to fight. Forgot about that thing. Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, all right. So something does happen here. The spatula is dead. However, uh, actually, no, Selkris, you get to go first. So Selkris, it's your move. Uh, all right. Um, what's what's left? Is the spatula down? The spatula is destroyed. The knife is destroyed. All that you see that's animated currently is the oven. Oh, all right. And it's not looking good. No, it's looking pretty bad. Um. But it took a really big hit from Kurogon, so maybe, yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I'll use like one of my free item things. I, I have like ice knife as a spell that I never use because Eldritch yeah. Blast is better. But I'll use ice knife. Sure. Uh, ice knife. Pew. <laughs> You throw out your ice knife, which sinks into the uh, into the oven, uh, and yeah, it cuts right in. Go ahead and roll me that damage. How? And it's got to roll a dexterity saving throw. Uh, or the it... piercing, or the cold. It's the cold. Uh, yeah, for the for the cold, which it will succeed on. So it's going to be a total of fourteen damage. Yep. Uh, All right, it is pretty beat up at this point. Yeah. Uh, is Levi, there anything else you'd like to, to do? I mean, Levi, if if Sword has like a another honey treat available, Levi can just take it and go bring it to the oven and go inside the oven and give it to him. Because <laughs> he didn't need a fire. <laughs> <laughs> Sword, do you want to let let Levi take one of the sure. honey treats? Excellent. So Levi will deliver the honey treat uh, directly directly to the oven. Um, 
Excellent. As that happens, Lance, you hear a rattling on the do- one of the doors behind you, and it bursts open. You can see it's a closet, uh, and a broom flies out and attacks you. <laughs> some, some blood. <laughs> oh no, the broom inning! He's gonna get beaten with the broom. Uh, I'll be real, I had a character that died to this broom in a campaign once, so uh, this is gonna be a 20 hit, <laughs> and a 19 to hit. I am unhit. Aha! Oh, I'm sorry, it should have advantage because it had surprise against it. Uh, the 21 gets you. It does not. Okay, this is you. The broom, yeah, bludgeons at you. And, uh, doesn't seem to do anything. All right. Uh, Lance, it's your turn. Uh, I suppose I'll have to deal with this broom before me. I'll swing upon it. Oh my. And, and bludgeon the broom at a critical oh, bludgeoning the broom. <laughs> uh, and you cleave the broom in twain. Oh, actually, you might not. How much health does the broom have? Uh, no, you cleave it in half. Yep. By two hit points, too. As you swing your mighty moon blade down, uh, you, you destroy the broom. It falls to the ground in pieces. Uh huh. I don't suppose I can look in the closet to see if there's anything waiting to come out. Toward- yeah, absolutely. As you step forward, the closet takes an attack of opportunity against you. As it's the closet mimic. Uh, it the misses me. Tries to close and bite down on you entirely. As it misses me, I will do my second attack on the closet. Okay. That'll hit the closet. Alrighty, uh, you'll connect to the, for the closet. The closet's pretty beefy because it's like, it's weird. Like, what even is the closet? Inside, you can see that there's like a bucket that this broom probably was sticking in. It's almost more like a mop than a broom. Uh, you can see that there is some, uh, there are some um, shelves with some stuff on it, uh, like cleaning supplies and whatnot. But as you look at it now, they seem almost more like teeth pointing up. Um, and yeah, you'll hit it for how much? Uh, 13? 13. Alrighty, you slash into the closet and it roars with a sound. Uh, anything else you'd like to do, Lance? We do have a closet behind us. Uh... I think I can handle it, but, uh, I mean, if you're done with the effort. Alrighty. We, uh, will go then to Sword's turn. Sword? Is the, uh, oven sedated? Uh, that actually needs you to roll a, um, an animal handling check, and I'm gonna give you advantage, because Levi has delivered the treat, assuming you wanted to do that. Uh, holy shit. Yeah, the oven is very sedated. The oven nom 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 eats the treat uh, and it's kind of got like a metal grate on its cover so you can like look uh, and because it opens up from like the middle part uh, on the side. Uh, it's a little metal grate so you could like look past it into the oven and see its contents and the grate almost like curves up like smiling teeth and the oven looks like it's happy now. Let's try to not break all of Clint's stuff, okay? So sorry, is there anything they else started like it. You, the They're the just other. hungry, like Couch was. <laughs> Anywho. Uh, did that end up taking my action, but... Uh, no, I'll say that was the bonus action. I'll give it to you. Alright. And then I'll attempt to feed the uh, closet a... Uh, Okay. I, I, I still have like five more after this. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you want to you want to try and feed the closet a treat? Yeah. Okay. You feel like the closet's probably gonna be a little tougher, but I mean that was a really good roll, so maybe give me another animal handling. This one is gonna be a disadvantage. Uh, as the closet is ravenous. Oh. Yep. Not not working. You throw the treat in the closet and it just gets hungrier. Uh, <laughs> anything else you'd like to do, Sword? 
Yeah, I'm just gonna step back a wee bit. Okay, so you step out of the hallway, just back into the living room. Uh, as you do so, you bump into the couch, which is trying to like look past you to see what's going on. The couch is interested uh, in what's happening. Might want to step back. Uh, it's the oven's turn. The oven is going to run forward, Kurogon, pushing past you. Uh, would you like to take an attack of opportunity? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll take oh, an okay. attack of opportunity. The, the, wait, the oven's pushing yeah, past him? The oven's pushing past. Why? It seems I don't like know. Toward Lance. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. All I know is... 23. Oh, you cleave down at the oven and your sword... Ting! It's magic, so... I know. Good gun! Don't it doesn't break it everything! It, that didn't work! Uh, it appears the cast iron is strong enough to resist or completely immune to all bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. That's weird. Uh, as uh, the oven rushes past you, uh, it is going to then uh, rush uh, right next to you, Lance, and it is going to belch fire uh, at the closet. Which huh? is just do 4d10 fire damage. We fed it. It's on our side, Kurgo. Oh. Well, I wasn't paying attention to that. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, God, it's your turn, as the oven seems to have come to Lance's aid. Oh, cool! The uh, is now partially on fire. Oh, well, let's make it more on fire as I step past these guys. Uh -huh. And I just... Uh, kinda, he kind of just belches for a bit, and, and there's a little puff of smoke that comes out. <laughs> and then all of the fire comes out as he uses his breath weapon. Ah, excellent. I'm it just sorry, does 20 damage. Your wardrobe is gone. Your wardrobe is dead, Clint. Well, no, this is a this is a storage closet. This isn't oh, okay. uh yeah, this isn't his, his walk-in. Uh this but basically walk um if he fails, okay. he'll still take half damage, but it oh, will be it 20 damage. Fails dexterity saving throws. It's oh, cool. It yeah, it's it's just 20 fire damage then. And actually, looking at it, you figure if you just walked far enough away from it, it probably wouldn't be able to attack you. But, you know, uh, it's now it just, a burning closet. Fire damage. 20 fire damage. There you go. Alrighty. The closet mimic is going to go. Um, do you walk up next to Lance, or do you stay a little further back? Or I'm staying a little further back. I, I, I basically uh, just you know lit it on fire from a distance, and then I'm stepping back a bit. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> All right, the uh, the closet is going to make uh, an attack against you, Lance, since you're up there still. Uh, it's going to slam at you, a 22. That is missed. And it will make its second attack, a 24. That is a hit. That will finally, uh, 16 bludgeoning damage, uh, as it just kind of like tries to bap you with whatever's inside of it. Uh, that's all the closet's got. The closet seems pretty beat up on the inside, by the way, Lance. Uh, because it's now partially on fire. Selkris, it's your move. All right, the, the, the closet is on fire. Mm -hmm. It also seems to have a very short reach. Uh, I guess Selkris will... Uh, I don't know if, like, cold damage will put out the fire, so she's just gonna... Mm -hmm. Cast some fairy fire on it, I suppose. I'll, I'll say, Selkris, uh, mechanically, it being on fire doesn't actually mean anything. That's just me, it, uh, what is it, uh, incre you know, adding to the ambiance of the situation since the fire thing. Was yeah, fire. but Selkris kind of wanted to put it out, but <laughs> whatever. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. So, uh, so what would you it. like to do then? If you wanted uh, to put it out, I, you know, you could do that with just a magic, you know, whatever uh, cold-based thing you got. Sure. I'll cast Frostbite. Why not? <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm breaking out the wimpy spells. Well, I'll say the Mimic can make constitution saving throws. It fails. <laughs> yes. uh, the closet takes five cold damage, uh, and the fire pisses out. It also has disadvantage on the next Attack roll, yeah, that's yeah. actually, that could be big. Uh, are you moving anywhere, Selkris? Uh, Selkris will stay behind the pack. Gotcha. Lance, it's your move then. Actually, 
Levi <laughs> may deliver another cookie if Sword is willing. <laughs> Sword, go for it if you think you can. Beautiful. So Levi goes over to you, Sword, and eh, cookie, <laughs> cookie treat, uh, and grabs one of your your honey treats and goes to deliver it to the closet. Now, um, now Levi's not just gonna like hand it to him. He's just gonna dive into the closet. <laughs> ex- well, Levi can get attacked by the closet. It's fine. But I guess we'll wait yeah. until we we'll see what happens in the closet's turn. Yep. Lance is your move. Sort of, you could pacify the claws. And I'll kind of take a knee down, pet the oven, and I'll cast Cure Wounds on the oven because he Aww. was looking pretty beat up, and now he's facing off the claws. Okay. Uh, um, now, Lance. Yes? You know that, well, actually, you really aren't sure if this thing is a construct or a mimic. Uh, the oven. Would you still like to to cast the cure wound? They seem more alive, and this seems less awakened as a weird shift romancy thing. So I'd probably give it a go. Okay. Unfortunately, the oven is a construct uh, more than a, a mimic. It is not not a mimic. He's so. not a construct in our heart. Exactly. And I will. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. I thought I'd plan for bonus action, but I do not. All right, sword. What would you like to do? You want? Oh, I'm sorry. First, can you roll me uh, your animal handling for your honey treat? Uh, again, it would be with disadvantage, but a twenty will still do it. Sword. The the closet, like argh, argh, just lashing around, flipping out inside, and Levi dives right in with one of the honey treats and just yeah, throws it in like a bucket, uh, which just g- grabs it up and devours it. And the closet, like, stops for a minute. Like, it's almost thinking. Like, it's, like, chewing. Uh, and relaxes. Seemingly pacified by the honey treats. It's still your turn, though. What would you like to do? I mean, they're constructs. <laughs> I, I guess the only other thing I could think of that might do something is casting uh, mending can't mending takes a minute mm-hmm. would uh, would you like to to start mending something yeah uh, all right this, As, uh, since we've been got banged up them up a, a little bit Dean can at least take a few cracks out of them yeah and as you kind of take a knee and you start using the mending cantrip to uh, try and heal up the oven, uh, the oven kind of like toots a little bit, like it, like almost like a teapot. Uh, Adorable. Yep, and it, it's got a, like a nice warm, uh, comforting fire that's kind of swollen up inside of it. Uh, the closet seems to leave you all alone, uh, and the oven just kind of patunk, 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 starts following you around. Um, oh my god, it's adorable. <laughs> You have an oven follower, uh, and actually, uh, mending candra. Um, let's see. What level, what cleric level are you? You're, I'm sorry, that's a cleric. dumb question. That's a very dumb question. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you restore 10 hit points to the oven. It does uh, say that it can physically repair a magic item or construct. Yes, exactly. So I've just wanted to decide uh, how much, um, how many hit points worth of healing that would really be. You know what I mean? Because it yeah, damaged yeah. in a couple of places from the shatter, um, and it probably damaged itself tearing itself out of the wall. But yeah, it's it's definitely healed up a little bit um, after just a minute of mending. You think you could probably do that a couple more times and heal it up all the way if you wanted? Um, right. But for the time being, as you kind of look around, the couch is looking toward you like, I'm the couch. And uh, the oven is following you around all cute like. Uh, would Silk you guys like to explore will... any further? Silcrest might pet the oven. Uh, the uh, oven Kurgan's going to explore more. Toot. Toot toot. Yeah, it whistles happily. Uh, I'll join in Kurgan on that. Okay. For anything that looks useful, magic or otherwise, 
Uh, yes. more, maybe more uh, mimics or constructs that we can recruit uh, <laughs> for the upcoming <laughs> battle slash war. Mm -hmm. Uh, hey, so Chris is gonna go. Got, uh, four treats left. All right. So Chris is gonna go back into the living room and uh, ask the couch if there's anything interesting playing around that it's seen. Um, that's a very good question. Has there is there anything interesting that the couch has seen? Um, the couch makes noises at you. All right, show me. Uh, it. Can you, sh can you show me, boy? Um, did little Timmy fall down the well? <laughs> it like goes over to first. It goes over to the um, um, the fireplace, the big okay. brick fireplace, and just kind of like scratches one of its big couch legs at the fireplace. All right, I will check the fireplace in case there's anything fiery there. <laughs> um, it, there doesn't. There just appears to be old, burned-out ashes at the bottom. Hmm. Can I look up the fire, the, the chimney? Selkros so is looking for a switch or something. <laughs> it, uh, uh, like a stone panel. Lance will collect some of the ashes in there because it was a portal that could be a key and having I don't know planar connection. Yeah, actually, Lance, you do find something of potential interest as you're investigating it. Uh, you find uh, scattered at the bottom, like buried under the ashes, uh, what looks like a um, a Y-shaped piece of metal. Um, it looks like kind of twisted uh, steel. Uh, and yeah, it's shaped kind of like a Y. Would Silcrest know what that is, considering her background in fiendish stuff? Uh, roll me... Um... A well, I'm an arcana check, actually. All right. Yeah. Levi, any idea what this is? Uh, Levi doesn't know. Uh, for... does it have any like yeah, not engravings? Sure, uh, yeah. You go ahead and look at it, Karagon. Uh, you're capable of, of magical stuff. Go ahead and also roll me an arcana check if you like. So, because you can't sure. make a of it, Levi has no idea. Yeah. That's a fantastic Yeah, Not role. sure what this could be. I can read Abyssal, though, so if... Yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't have any religious sense. significance, does it? No, not at all. Okay. Are the runes celestial? There are no runes in it. Oh. Yeah, it's just a so wide it's just shape. just a looking key. Yeah, I mean, the... It's, it's shaped like a Y, right? Like the letter Y but the metal is all kind of twisty around it, um, and that might just be a decorative thing, you're not really sure. Is right. there a big sign somewhere that's missing a Y and this <laughs> long Oh, it's puzzle? fairly small. It's only about six or eight inches long. Okay. Is this a small... any uh, devilish, uh, or actually probably demon, uh, demonic origin, yeah. because I studied specifically demon stuff in my yeah. knighthood and stuff. I think that Arcana check, I think what you can tell from your Arcana check, even though it is a failure, uh, it just doesn't, like, remind you of anything demonic. You know? Darn. Think. Right. Uh, I don't well, have any, you know, any language or runes or any symbols on it. We'll it keep it, I guess. Yes, I guess. Uh, okay. So Chris will turn back to couch. You uh, probably, he... if, by the way, if someone's gonna write it down, Y-shaped piece of metal from Slaughter Murder's Fireplace. Okay. <laughs> Go I'll ahead. Let's do it. Yeah, Lance, since you picked it up. <laughs> Lance, did you want to roll an Arcana check? You can cast magic. Could I go religion? Um. No. Not for this. Okay, I'll guidance myself going in. Sure. Good shot. Oof. Nope. I don't think my d4 is here. Gonna... No, we're not. Sword, do you want to look at it? I mean, you're the only one that hasn't looked at it yet. Everyone's passing it around. I'm still kind of looking to see if I can find, like, a keyhole or a switch or something on that. A secret fire. door. <laughs> yeah. Um, roll me an investigation check. Nice. Wow. Around. I'm surprised I know. Those yeah, are two I mean, crits. Really good looking around and investigating, but unfortunately, there isn't any sort of secret anything here. You... There's no, like, lever, there's no any of that. Is there, like, another floor to this place? Uh, yeah, there, there's a basement, and actually, I think, 
uh, you do find there is a latch and a secret, pa- a secret, not a secret so much, but there is a, a trap door kind of deal that would lead into the basement or, or into a basement area. Well, uh, time to go to the basement. <laughs> Sure. You want to open the trap door down? I will open the trap door. All okay. right. And have headlong into danger because I feel no mal nor mimic nor construct. Is this, is yeah. this the right way to go, Couch? Uh, Couch just kind of like does the equivalent of a shrug. All and right. Wobbles around. I All right. Know. Well. Oh yeah. Was um, there anything up the chimney, by the way? We die. Nothing. Ah. All right, Kurgan, good luck down there. Can you even Kurgan. see in the dark? I have a torch, it's fine. <laughs> you I'll have it in my mouth. <laughs> and uh, looking down, there are some crates, uh, and there are uh, a bunch of, um, like, casks for, like, wine or something. Interesting. Some bottles. Uh, I'm going to look around to see if there's anything interesting. I will also cast light. On my sword. <laughs> as uh, yeah, as Kurgan starts moving away, Selcris will follow him down. Okay. Yeah, I mean, there's a, a like a drop down ladder. Yeah, we'll, sure. just, we'll just go down. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like a pretty normal wine cellar. Nothing particularly interesting. Well, we'll look through the boxes. Behind. I'm gonna err on the side of caution and use uh, Tamatarji to kind of make little uh. A little tremor to see if it can't, you know. Ah, see if that aggravates anything. Aggravates any mimics or constructs yeah. in the area. You, you use thaumaturgy, and as you do so, uh, you see some movement. Uh, at first, you think it's just residual from the tremors, but you notice it's a couple, like several of the wine bottles on one of the wine racks. Um, and you see one of the wine bottles, like, slowly float off the wine rack and then um, begin to fly toward you, Sword. Um, but it doesn't fly straight. It kind of like veers and, and curves, and uh, it seems like it's having a hard time flying it's a straight drunk. line. Yeah. It's drunk. <laughs> the spirits uh, the drunk, have had too many spirits. The wine bottle uh, mimic flies toward you. Do, you. do you grab it as it gets to you? Yeah, I'll grab it by the neck so it can't do anything. <laughs> Okay, yeah, it just let you know, goes lax like a bottle in your grasp. It still is corked and everything, but looking inside of it, it's like three quarters empty. <laughs> it's been drinking itself. <laughs> While everyone's going into the cellar, Lance is gonna stay behind up top and finish healing up oven. Ah, yeah, no problem. You you heal up oven. Uh, a- Kurgan did check no. the boxes, by the way. Kurogun? Oh, you yes, flip over the I box. was checking the boxes. They are normal boxes, unfortunately. Uh, they or look fortunately. Like, or maybe, maybe fortunately. Uh, at one point, they were filled with probably ingredients or something, like roots. And they probably are still, they still have like roots and things in them, but it's like old and just uh, probably Ew. not good. Yeah, they're not like moldy or anything, but... They started growing roots into the boxes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's precisely that kind of deal. Yeah, these just look like some of Clint's old ingredients. Okay. Anything interesting, Kurgan? There are more drunk Not wine bottles really. than interested in them. Oh, uh, there's some drunk wine bottles. That is lots and lots of roots that are have roots now. Well, I'm gonna go back upstairs. Okay, I will take her. When you uh, come up, bring one wine bottle. We'll never hear the end of it from Fox if we don't bring. (laughs) You're you're very right. I I will do that. Oh, cool. Never mind. (laughs) As uh, as you all say all of that, you suddenly hear. You feel like a a slight tremble in the ground, and your first thought is, "Oh, it's sword casting thaumaturge again." But sword. You felt the tremble in the ground, and you weren't the one who cast Thaumaturgy. And then there's a... Another kind of Uh-oh. louder... It's time to get out of the basement now. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're out of time. Out of the basement. 
Uh, so close. So Adam Nopes. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, you, you feel then another just strong crash, right? Like, uh, like a large foot slamming and shaking the. Uh, I guess Sophrus will hurry outside then. Okay. I will hit myself and sword as we're running out with Death Ward. Ah, okay. So, Lance, casting a Death Ward on yourself and sword. Um, Kurogan, Selkris, either of you like to cast anything real quick? or Selkris, you're rushing uh, out to get, get, the, get the first look, right? Yeah, uh, she'll flip, flip her banner of Enduring Vigor. Ah, all right. Go ahead and give everyone your 10 pit points for that. Yep. And, um, and I guess Levi will enter full on Barb Devil mode. Oh, you're just going to go right for it. Okay, cool. I'm staying in my uh, Dragon's Fire. Okay. Um, Are you all going outside? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> in case as, it decides to crush the house, you know. As you make your way outside, uh, first you all see that it is cold ice cold around you. Uh, the ground is completely frozen solid as self I feel like snapped. I feel like my sh- stick has been stolen. Well, no, Selkris, that's you. Oh, and yeah. You, you snap and freeze everything solid. Little bits of snow beginning to fall around you, condensing out of the air. Um, but you see in the distance, not even that far distance at this point, what is causing these loud crashes, these loud rumblings in the ground you see what appears to be a massive tree. Um, It appears like many of the trees here on the Baradak, an empty dead husk, uh, craggy branches reaching up into the heavens, um, kind of hollowed out break in its main trunk about halfway up, uh, leaving an awful, almost grimace-like face to it. Uh, And you see It's moving uh, along with its large roots, just uh, like many, many legs. Uh, It is what appears to be some sort of a treant. You can see glowing from the inside of this creature uh, through the various nooks and hollows in it, uh, a green light. And your first thought is, that's some necromancy shit, because this is obviously an undead tree of some (laughs) kind. Uh, But as you look at it closer, the green light has a a strange quality to it, uh, a almost <sighs> warm quality to it, something that you all recognize, although clearly it is a, 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 some sort of horrible undead creature. The light is the same vibrant shade of green that you saw the one time that you touched the seed in the back room of Bartholomew's shop a vibrant green of life and of just energy now being twisted for evil by this terrible ant. And as it continues to stomp forward, it's maybe a hundred feet from you now, uh, making its way directly toward the tower, you can see it continuing to slowly grow and grow in size as uh, this thing is truly gargantuan. Um, oh, what goodness. would you all like to do? You probably, I mean, actually, I'd probably like you all to roll for initiative, first of all. As this yeah. Is to and tree is uh, making its way directly. And there's no way that uh, we can miss it, sure. Yeah, I mean, it's it's there. It's a tree. Are you kidding me with the same initiative as before? Don't get saucy. It's a tree. That saucy initiative. <laughs> All right, let me roll for her. your friends. You have couch and oven. They will help you. <laughs> Do they also get the temp HP from the banner? They, they do. Oh, wow, they oh, do. Oh, my. Don't That's pretty good. Oh, man. All right. By the uh, way, I could maybe use a minor heals if anyone has some. Uh, how much you down? That's not uh, 14. There we go. All right. I'll uh, prep you with a cure wound. Okay. All right. There we Dead. go. That's good. I'm oh. up all the way. Briar rolled terribly. Uh, all right. Still better than me, though. <laughs> Who goes first? Who are the highest? Briar actually rolled higher than one of you. My goodness. <laughs> uh, Sword, Lance, Selkris, Briar, Krogon, and let me roll for your friends. Couch, 
and oven. So someone goes after Kurogan. And... Alright. All right. Sword, it is your move first. You are currently 100 feet from this gargantuan tr uh, undead treant. It appears to be easily like 60, 70 feet tall and growing. And growing. Oh, boy. Yeah, as if like enlarging like the enlarged spell. At least in the way that you have seen creatures enlarge via the enlarged spell before. I'm getting oh, the right. strangest sense of deja vu. I know, right? Have you been in this place before? The nope. very first mission when I was hired by Bartholomew was stopping the tree from growing like that. Huh. Maybe it was related. <laughs> and Kurogan has the growth stone. Uh, or had the growth stone. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, Zord, what's your move? All right, um, to start with, I'm going to cast a level six of us, so a level three blast okay. on everybody. All right, what about, what about Levi? Does he get a blast? Level four blast. <laughs> what about couch and oven? Did they get a blast? Yes, they're included in. I, I counted Couch and Oven. I didn't oh. count Levi. All Excellent. Right. Wow, Couch has a shitload of health. What the hell? <laughs> I swear, like, Couch has a lot more health than I thought. Is Couch, couch is a construct? A uh, no, Couch is a mimic. Couch okay. is a good boy. So we can revive him if he dies. Yes. God, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk destroying Couch just like that. That's a dick move. I love yeah. Couch. I love Couch too. Yeah, we share this affinity for cow. I'm sorry. Um, you cast a, a bless, blessing everybody. Is there anything else you'd like to do, Sword? Um, not at the moment. Okay. Uh, in that case, Oven is going to go next. Oven is going to scamper forward uh, on his little iron legs right toward the giant tree. Get him, Oven! Yeah. Oven moves 60 feet toward the tree, which is 100 feet away, uh, and that's its turn. Lance, it's your turn. How far away was the uh, tree? The tree is 100 feet currently. Okay, uh, I suppose I'll start the charge. I'll, well, I will give Kurgan a little mm -hmm. tap on the back and get holy weapon off on his weapon Ooh. okay all right yeah what's that do again <laughs> uh, uh extra two eight plus hit. one you know it if i say asparagus don't look at your weapon okay uh so it's a two eight plus one to uh for damage okay it's you do more damage now yeah that's pretty much that that's dangerous <laughs> It, oh, not, yes. for, not for you, for the enemy. Yes, but here's the thing. If I went into uh, the dragon's claws, I get an extra d6 of fire damage on top of that. Lots of damage. Yep. Yes. Alrighty. Which is what I might have to do. <laughs> what else are you going to do with silver bells? You know what? I can't quite get up where I want to be getting, so I'm just going to dash up 60 and kind of strafe in a bit of a cone fashion so we don't all end up in the same little 60 to 30 foot Alrighty And that'll do it Scoot forward Uh, Selkris, it's your move Um, well, Selkris is gonna stay by the door She okay. doesn't need to move Sure Cause range is where she likes it best First she has Levi hurl flame at the undead tree mm -hmm. Uh, I think he gets that twice. Alrighty. Uh, that is two blasts of fire. Uh, they'll both hit. It seems that this horrible, horrible undead tree, uh, I guess, lacks uh, some armor. It seems to be partially rotted away. Hmm. Uh, right. For how much? Uh, eight fire and then 11 fire. 
and yep. also appears to be vulnerable to fire. Uh, oh, that's good to know. Into it, it uh, takes actually uh, 22, 38 points of fire damage from that. All right. As it screeches in anger. Yeah, it can screech all it likes. <laughs> Uh, or rather, it like doesn't screech. I'm sorry. It creaks in like an awful, ghastly sort of way, because he's an undead tree. Um, it's true. It's true. And then for her action, mm -hmm. so Chris is. I don't know if that works. Yeah, it's undead, definitely. So that won't work. Yeah, 100. percent You can just. You can tell. <laughs> There's like uh, ghosts in it. You can you see ghosts floating around near it. Yeah, that's fair. She'll fireball it then. Sure. At fifth level. Mm hmm So Okay. Now do you want to do cold damage? I wanna do fire damage. Are you, are you sure? No, okay. <laughs> uh alright, I will it's got advantage on instead of magic resistance. Uh it rolls at uh, twelve. Yeah. So for thirty six seventy two points of fire damage. Cool. Uh as you blast it with fire, and it was a horrible scream. It's on fire currently. Uh, again, aesthetic, not not actual mechanic, but <laughs> yep, you yep. blast it with fire. Is there anything yep. else you'd like to do, Selkris? Is uh, an incredibly effective turn? <laughs> Selkris will hang back. She's not going to approach the tree. Alrighty. Uh, it's now Briar. Uh, Briar takes one monstrous step forward on its many roots. Uh, and goes 50 feet, uh, which brings it right up next to Oven, uh, and it is going to uh, grapple Oven. How dare. Uh, grasping briars whip around it. Uh, oh, why did it not roll the hit? Okay. Don't you dare touch Oven. Oven's a precious uh, oh, beast. It's, it's attacking Oven. Oh, there we go. 28. So the briars wrap around oven, which don't seem to hurt oven at all, because it's just normal piercing damage. Um, unfortunately, though, uh, you see uh, them start to, like, dig into the creature, uh, or into, into poor oven, uh, as oven is grappled and restrained. Uh, Lance, it's your... Oh, I'm sorry, not Lance. I already read you. Uh, Kurogan, it's your turn. Okay, from... Uh, I'm gonna fly, like, 30 feet up. Um, and from 90 feet away, mm. I'm just gonna send a nice chromatic orb, uh, with a second level slot at fourth level, because I'm in the dragon's fire, mm -hmm. um, at it. So, uh, have, have a real big fiery time, what Mr. Tree fire? Friend. Okay. This is literally his thing. Like, he doesn't get to use it very much. Alrighty, that'll hit. Uh, for... 35, uh, so 70 or, damage. 25, right? Uh, yeah, 25, so 50 so damage. 50 damage. Uh, you A little more blast it with an orb of fire. <laughs> Uh, do you like how, how do you cast this again? Do you shoot out of your mouth or? Your oh mouth? yeah, what happens is the energy gathers uh, from around my hands, uh -huh. which are held outstretched, and my mouth opens wide like uh, an alligator mouth, Beautiful. and uh, a tiny ball of fire begins to form that grows bigger and bigger and bigger, and then it just launches out like in a mech anime. Excellent, and it blasts into the giant tree like in a mech anime, uh, and it reels from the hit. Um, anything else you'd like to do, Kurogan? Uh, for now, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'll just be 30 feet away. Where are you? You're in the air? I'm in the air, uh, okay. yes. Um, 30 feet up and, uh, probably, uh, wherever, how far away he is from, uh, He's now the... 50 feet from the... Okay, so I'm 50 feet away from him and 30 feet in the air. Okay, so you're pretty much above, right above Selkris. Yes. Couch is going to scramble forward. Uh, and Couch can get only 30 feet, so Couch just uses its whole turn to get to... Get him, uh, Couch! Beat him uh, up! And you hear Crouch, Couch growling. Uh, but that's all Couch can do this turn. Sword, it's your move. You see the giant, horrible monster. I'm going to move up 
30 feet and okay. then cast uh oh i actually just realized my sword but i guess we'll just do this after you'll do the layer after your turn what's that okay. don't worry about it uh you can go ahead Yeah, I'm gonna cast flame strike where it oh, doesn't hit. It. Can all of you just do sick fire damage? Uh, all right, I'm gonna roll. Pretty much. <laughs> you picked the Pretty wrong much. motherfucker. Uh, it rolled a 17. Oh my god, it actually succeeded. Holy shit. Um, so it's still gonna take a ton of damage. Uh, it's still 17 points of of no. I'm sorry. Uh, it takes a 17 points. It's still gonna take of damage. Yeah, because it still takes all 10 of the fire, even though it succeeded. Uh, right. It's going to take half of the radiant, so 18. Oh, is uh, it resistant the radiant? Like, it does not resist radiant, but it, it saved on the same. It got a 17. So it's oh, you're yeah, right, right. right. Yeah. It, uh, it has a minus 2 to its dexterity, so it's a very lucky roll for it. Um, as your flame strike strikes down upon it, it kind of roar, uh, not roars, but creaks and, uh, and groans. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do, Sword? Yeah, I'll spiritual up in the next round. Alrighty. Are you just staying by the entrance to the tower? Do you want to back I, I, the rocks? I, I, I'm, I'm moved forward, but not oh, moved up to all forward. the way. Oh, pardon I, me. I'm not, like, in a direct path. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, now it's layer action. Uh, it is going to summon six ghost spiders and two swarms of vampire bats. You see as it screeches or kind of groans. Uh, you see ghastly spirits of spiders kind of leap out from within its hollows uh, and move to action. And you see terrible, horrible blood-sucking vampire bats fly out of uh, one particularly large hollow in it. Uh, and they go immediately. So, these ghost spiders are going to go first. Uh, they leap out, and what's the first thing that they see? Who's closest to it right now? Me. I think... Oven. Probably. Yeah, yeah oven. oven. Unfortunately, they go for oven, and oven is uh, uh, is unfortunately restrained, so they have advantage on their attacks against poor oven. Uh, oven's immune to poison damage, which is nice, but he's not immune to the necrotic damage of their bite. Uh, what is his AC? AC 17? Alright. That's one bite, and there are six of them. Two bite, three bite, four bite, five bite. Six bite. So six bites, and it looks like a bunch of them hit. Um, four of them hit. So he's going to take five, 16 necrotic damage, uh, 22 necrotic damage, 33 necrotic damage. Oven is uh, kind of graying and seems in pretty rough shape uh, being chomped on by these spiders. The swarms of vampire bats, however, seem a little bit more directed than maybe the giant, the, the ghost spiders, uh, which these ghost spiders are very large. I mean, they're like the size of giant spiders, but they're ghost. Um, and they're flying through the air instead of skittering. Um, the vampire bats are going to go for things that they can attack, which are going to be fleshy guys, which you're all just about the same distance, right? Like, Lance and Sword are probably the two closest right now, so... They go after you two. Uh, one's going to go at Lance, one will go at Sword. So Lance, this is against you. And it tries to bite you. 20 to hit. That's a mess. And this another swarm of vampire bats heads toward you, Sword. Uh, 12 to hit. So that one. Missed. All right. That's all that they've got. Uh, that's their turn. Oven's turn. Oven is going to belch fire. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should probably just put the roll in there. It's going to just be easier than me ro rolling out every time. Uh, bup, 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 bup. And he bumps his fire. Oh, and rolls really a well. A whole lot of damage. Uh, and that's fire. a lot of damage. <laughs> 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 that's a lot of damage. A fire damage. Uh, and just, uh, it roars out. Uh, <laughs> 
Um, and that is all that Oven does on that round. Uh, as that happens, does it, however... Does Oven, like, hit the spiders as well? Oh, shit, he should, yeah. I also oh. should have mentioned this, uh, oh. but at initiative, my bees do come out. Oh! Yes, I will add the bee damage right now, my friend. It is 10 per round, I'm so. gonna add bees to the initiative order that I'm looking at. <laughs> Probably a um, good idea. Your jar of bees brings, brings out, and your bees come to life. Uh, let me roll for the ghost spiders now for their dexterities. Oh my god. Well, one of them's gonna fail, at least. Uh, from the fire. And it gets destroyed. So now there are only five ghost spiders. Uh, okay. Alright. So, that was Oven's turn. At the end of Oven's turn, you see them kind of wrapped up in the vines, and you see the vines, like, clinch inward, and you see Oven start to crack. Oven, no! As Oven automatically fails a death saving throw. Uh, Lance Silverblood, it's your turn. Wait, it's taking bludgeoning damage? It's taking... The grasping vines are sucking the very life essence out of, uh, out of Oven. I'm gonna read uh... it. At the end of a grappled creature's turn, it must succeed on a DC-19 constitution saving throw, or fail a death saving throw, as the briars sap the very life energy from them. A death saving throw gained in this way lasts until you complete a short rest or until Briar is destroyed. See, that's so bogus that even a random dog in the distance barked. Well, yeah, Oven Mimic unfortunately failed its death save, so it's it's got one failed death save. Okay. We move to the, uh, and unfortunately the Bless would not have saved him. Next in the initiative now is Lance. What would you like to do, Lance? It's about to get really real. Oh, yeah. Let's start this off. I will bane Briar and swarms of bats. All right. I will roll for Briar. Briar rolled a zero um, on their charisma save, as they are a zombie, effectively. And the two swarms of vampire bats, also bat. Uh, Bingo. All baned. I will make that roll there. I will bonus action sanctuary myself. Alrighty. Alrighty. Anything else you'd like to do, Lance? That'll do it. Alright. A nice, safe bane and sanctuary. Uh, we move to your turn, so Chris, what would you like to do? Um. I don't know if Sel Chris can infer this, but is Oven immune to fire damage? You don't know. You never mm. tried it. That's true. Well, regardless, Levi will hurl flame at Briar. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, the swarms of vampire bats, they're bothering Lance and Sword, aren't they? Yeah, they're all around them. Yeah, then they'll hurl flame at- he'll hur hurl flame at each of the swarms. Excellent. Go ahead and make me those attack rolls. Uh, you'll hit both, and swarms have very low uh, armor classes. Uh, and we'll destroy both of them. There are no more swarms of vampire. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, wait. They are not just one hit. Wait a minute. I'm thinking of that. Wait, you mean they're not a spatula or a knife? No, they're not a spatula or a knife. Let me roll their hit points. Sorry. Holy shit. They have way more hit points than I thought they did. Uh, all right. Cool. I gotta keep track of their hit points now. Uh, now that they've been damaged. And I guess, uh... They're definitely injured. I'll give you that. Uh, but that doesn't kill either of them. Sure. Um. Okay. Uh. Well, I could make things worse for Briar. What would you like? I mean, do you want to do that? Is that kind what you want to do? Can Not I, what? like, target Briar and a couple of the ghost spiders around Oven without hitting Oven? Yeah, I think you could hit probably two of the ghost spiders without hitting Oven. All right, cool. I'll do synaptic static. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Uh, boop, 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 boop. You're, so you're synaptic static. I gotta roll, what, dexterity saving throws for that? Or is it intelligence? Intelligence. Intelligence. Oh, boy. Intelligent spiders. Wow, they actually rolled really well for their minus two. But uh, they still failed, and 
Yeah, they Don't did. they also have hey, Bane? Well, Briar, yeah, I mean, they got no chance. Yeah. Briar, also, no chance. They're all synaptic static. <laughs> Ooh, uh, Brain and synaptic two static two stacking. Yep. Uh, you destroy one of the two spiders. I'm, cool. I rolled their hit points individually. Uh, the other spider is barely clinging to life. All right. Um... Oh, sorry, or to unlife, rather, as your synaptic static disrupts its ghastly form. All right, so now for one minute, Briar has a minus. It, you know, it rolls a d6 and subtracts the number from all its attacks, ability checks, and concentration saves. All right. But it can repeat the intelligence save at the end of each of its turns. Oh boy. <laughs> and it has been. Yeah, this is not going to be good for it. Yeah, let me. Uh, so it's. Is that the end of your turn, Salkris? So, you wanted to stay where you are near the end of the uh, tower? She'll kind of move around to the side of the tower, I think. Cool, cool. Uh, Briar will not recharge his lair action to summon minions, uh, and will uh, continue to move forward. Uh, it just it doesn't seem to care that you're in its way, uh, lance and sword. It just kind of moves like past you almost toward the tower uh, so it gets to the base of the tower and then it is going to make two grasping briar attacks uh one at each of you i can each of who uh, i'm sorry at uh, lance and sword oh, okay wisdom saves oh good call uh-huh <laughs> both of them advantage all right so I guess it's just gonna go for sword twice, and I guess if it hits it, it can only do it once. All right, sword, we got one going at you. You ready? I'm ready. Twenty-seven days. As the vine grasps around you. I'm sorry. It's twenty-seven, but it, it, what are the penalties here? It, minus minus four and or minus twenty-four and minus one d six. So let's see. So it's actually a twenty-three, and, and then. then... <laughs> Uh, it's actually 17 <laughs> to hit. Uh, well, that, <laughs> nice. Okay. nice. The second attack, because it has a second one, would be a 19. Miss. All right, it just misses anyway. Oh my god, you guys are annihilated. This is the best. Already. Uh, okay. Brian's I mean, like, synaptic Ugh. static and main stacking are, is brutal. It's monstrous. Uh, especially against a guy with three charisma. All right, so at the end of his turn, he gets to roll a saving throw, Lance, against the or not. He Lance. does not me. save against Bane. Everybody against that. He, he can he can save against me, well, but he doesn't. No, he can't. <laughs> uh, that is the end of Briar's move. Karogan, it's your turn. It is me, Karogan, yeah, the Karogan, Grot and the Purifull. Guy. <laughs> uh, he's gonna use Chromatic Orb at fourth level again. All right. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, on Briar's turn, because you did not do the damage type to disable his regeneration, uh, you see Briar heal an incredible amount of hit points uh, as the green light inside it pulses and it's kind of burns immediately kind of heal over. It's pretty bad. That is unfortunately going to miss Kurogan as you blast out another chromatic orb. Oh, that was some bullshit. Alive. But as my bundle section, I'm going to switch over to... Uh the knight's oh sorry the dragon's claws okay um so i lose the use of my shield all right. but now i'm more dangerous than before all righty well, sounds good anything else you'd like to do Kuroga? um i'm still 30 feet in the air mm -hmm. uh is it within melee range of me it i want to know if i'm going to get attacked <laughs> I mean, let me rephrase. Yeah, you think you're within its melee reach. Okay, so if and I move too far away, then it, I'm and... gonna get grabbed. So I'm gonna move around it, but not uh, out of melee range. <laughs> yeah, excellent. At the end of your turn, as you kind of skirt around the side, one of its roots throws a boulder at you. Throws a fucking boulder at me. Now, well, it actually gets. And also. I have gravitational short, so my AC is higher against these. Well, it gets a 19 after all of the bullshit. Well, I have a 20 AC against ranged attacks, so... There you go. Your gravitational <laughs> shorts redirecting the boulder out around you. 
Uh, all right. Sure they're awesome. Beautiful. Uh, that was the end of your turn, Kuroga. Now it's Couch's turn. Couch is going Get to him, Couch! Gonna bite him. Bite! Nom, Couch, nom, nom, nom. Couch bites Briar for 20 damage. Well, that's pretty good, actually. Good rolls, Couch. High five, Couch. Oh, wait. Is Couch acid is damage... Couch. Acid damage is effective against regeneration, right? Mm, not Some of them. Uh, fair enough. Not, not so the damage pretty much just fire. Yeah, just do some fire damage against this guy's. <laughs> so it's not fire, it's not radiant, it's not acid, pierce, or force. Yep, none of those. Okay. Wait, it's so, not wait, fire? It's not Probably fire? It's gonna be necrotic, considering that it's a holy artifact power. Who knows? Wait, so fire de wait, doesn't so stop the regeneration? fire doesn't no, stop the regen? does not stop its regen. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's, it's it something regained else. like a hundred hit points is what it looked like it regained. At the start. Yikes. Time to try different damage types. Well, Here we the go. Bees, the bees do ten damage to it at the, at the top of the round. Now it's yep. Sword's turn. Ten irreversible damage. An un undoable damage. Yeah, undo it. You, you can't avoid it. Sword, there's some vampire bats flying around your head. Are there? Uh, and yeah. the trees. Yeah, there's nice. still coming. And yeah, and the giant tree is also like right there on you. All right, um, I'm going to summon a spiritual weapon mm -hmm. and attempt to uh, cut the uh, oven free from the. Okay. Uh, now the spiritual weapon unfortunately doesn't do slashing damage, so you couldn't use it to free the oven. Yeah. You gotta use slashing damage to free the oven. No, I'll could, still do could, the damage. Could Levi do his claw attack? That's piercing damage, but it, it's claws. Yeah, it needs to do slashing damage. Man. Luckily, I can do slashing. I that will go down there. The 18 will absolutely hit. Go ahead oh, and give me that God. deep sword as your spiritual weapon oh, blasts into the side. Of, uh, of this creature. Oh, you cast it at a higher level. Oh, damn. You mean business. Um, and the 11 total damage on him. I don't know. Oh, well, I guess that's if it had advantage. Yeah, that would have been if it had crit. Unfortunately, I don't think you have advantage. 0 0.49 times 2? D8? I have, that's confusing. Yeah, it's, it's a math thing. Is there anything else that you'd like to do, Sword? Uh, I'm going to take swing at it with my hammer. Oh shit, okay. Uh, oh boy. Get that uh, square hammer ready. Swing down. Oh! No! oh! oh! Unfortunately, sword. As low as an armor class as this thing has, crit fail is a crit fail. Uh, swing and a miss, unfortunately. Um, this is like the third one I've had tonight. You know, the crit fails happen sometimes. I've least, had one too. It's one of those just, nights. As long as it's not death saving throws, you're good, right? Uh, anything else you'd like to do, Sword? Uh, I'll pack up to uh, avoid any additional. Okay. Yeah, because even with bless, I'm not gonna. Mm -hmm. The uh, ghost spiders are gonna go. There are four of them, and they're gonna attack uh, four oven. Which uh, they're gonna miss, and then hit, and then hit, and hit. Oh boy. No, no. no. Twenty-one. We're gonna have to bring Oven to the space base now. Oven is gonna take thirty-three points, and Oven goes out. You see the fire inside Oven go out, uh, and it's just kind of in the grasp of the uh, of the tree currently as all of the the vampire i'm sorry the ghost spiders chomp down at it oh, man, no! a very dramatic moment um the vampire bat swarms which are still alive are going to uh one of them's gonna attack you again um sword an eight to hit won't get you Another one is going to fly over at Cell. Oh, actually, the other one's going to try and bite you, Leia. Wisdom says. 21. Oh, it succeeds. Yeah, and it ch chomp. 
20. It's a catch it. Missed. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I spamed anyway, so the odds are very, like, very low. Um, all right, that's all they've got. Uh, oven. The roll death saving throw for Oven. Actually, Oven doesn't roll death saving throws. Oven might be dead. You're not sure. Um, Lance, it's your turn. I use divine intervention to uh, supplicate for Oven to be saved. <laughs> and if it's possible, to be restored as a living being rather than a... Oh, okay. Oven's going to be a true mimic if this works. Go ahead and roll your divine intervention. <laughs> this is going to be great, guys. Uh, oh, I fucked up. What absolute horseshit it would be if you got another one. No, 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 no. I was like, uh, I, I keep getting myself say. fucked up on the sorry, the ah, nerve. Stop, stop, stop it. you're killing us. <laughs> the drama. Does the he have to roll low or high? Is so close. Very close. <laughs> He's got to roll like a 10 or lower. Yeah, uh, 10 or lower. Yep. No cigar. Uh, unfortunately, you call out for Salune's aid, and Salune's like, of course, my child. Wait, didn't you call me last time? Uh, no, I'm not quite like that, obviously. But, uh, unfortunately, it's too soon for my powers able, to work. Not able to find you in this cold and dark taint uh, realm. All right. Well, Anne, would you like to do anything else? Let me look through my bonus actions. Yeah, nope, my three bonus action spells won't work, so that's it. Alrighty. Selkris, it's your turn. Alright. It's... Up and looks like they're in maybe dead. Yeah, it looks like it's, it's gonna be... It looks like an inanimate oven. Yeah. A, a partially damaged inanimate oven. So there are some Eldritch Blasts going at Briar. Uh-huh. Uh, one is... Force and one is cold. Hmm, I like the strat. You're gonna hit with both of them. Alright. Of course, I mean, Briar's armor class is 13. Uh, and that'll be 20. Uh, Alright, both of those are gonna hit. Uh, neither seems to have any particularly interesting impact against him. I mean, they do their full damage. But that's right, it. and then uh, the bats are still bothering. Uh... Yes, they're still flying around. Uh, sword and lance uh who's who's concentrating on something lance is all right, and sword is too. Oh, all yeah. right. Both you guys are well levi will try and take care of the bats for you oh one at each yep all righty uh like you did last time all right both of the swarms are at ha less than half their maximum hit points so they are reduced but they are not dead yet so there's a lot of bats is there anything um, else you'd like to do, Selkis? I think that'll be it for this. Alrighty. As your turn comes to an end, it's going to become Briar's turn. And take 10 B damage. No, I, I did that at the start of the round. I'm doing that at the start of the round. Okay. Remember. I wrote it on the initiative order. And as Briar goes, Briar... Uh, is going to attack you all. Oh my god, loudly. Oh my god, what is that? That's really loud, is what it is. My goodness. Uh, Briar is going to grasp out at you, Selfless. Oh, actually, let's see if he recharges his. Minions. I am kind of hiding behind the tower. It does recharge his minions. Uh, yeah, it just kind of moves around the tower. It's gargantuan. Is it no moving away from me, perhaps? Um. Yeah, I guess it's moving away from probably you and sword, where I have you spatially in my brain. If you okay. could, would like to take attacks, well. yeah, I'm definitely gonna do that. Here, have have that. Okay, that'll do it. That's slashing, radiant, and fire damage. Yeah, Excellent. there's problems when you go after the little munchkin of the group. Oh no, sword! Sword, come on, please. Unfortunately, not. Oh, oh the sword. bless, though! Know. The bless! The bless! Not quite enough. The bless. You need a 13. Oh, one short. Um, mm. But, Kurogan, you'll connect for 
27 damage. Yeah, it's 27 uh, damage, no big deal. Once again, you see uh, it pulse and regain an outrageous amount of hit points. Uh, as unfortunately, none of that seems to have stemmed the, uh, the regeneration. And it goes for you, Selkris. It reaches out with its grasping briars. Mm-hmm. 18 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Alrighty. You are grappled and restrained. You're gonna take 20 piercing damage uh, right. as it wraps around you and pulls you in. Um, I will take that damage. Okay. And, just do. and okay. then with its second attack, it will go after Levi. Sure. A 27 to hit That'll the hit of Briars. And Levi Does also the 18 is... still hit Stilkers even oh. with Bane and Synaptic Static? Oh yeah, don't forget about oh, those! Oh yeah, you need to roll those. Right. You're completely right. It, sorry, it's not 14, 18. it doesn't it hit. Was a, it, was a nine, it was a 9. So 9. No, it doesn't okay. hit. The, the 27's going at you as well. Uh, it, oh it that is. That being said, it's going to be a 27 minus 2, so a 25. Minus 4, so a 21. Alright, so that'll still hit. Okay. But a lot less damage. 15 piercing damage. And but I grappled. am grappled. Yeah. Uh, and I need to roll concentration on the snap and static, actually. Is it uh, a concentration spell, actually? I don't think it or is, is it no. Just dope? It's just dope. It's just oh dope. My god. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, it's really? not concentration, oh it just lasts. God. <laughs> hey? So that's like static is just good. <laughs> In yeah. theory, you could static and Bane with one character. Jeez. Yeah. Anyway, yep. uh, so Briar is just dumb. It's going to roll wisdom. No, nope. uh, I'm sorry, it has advantage. It's got magic wisdom, but it doesn't matter. It's no. still dumb at the end of its turn. Just, uh... Uh, <laughs> but you are grappled, and you can feel the little Briars wrapping around you, sucking your very life energy from your body. Now, was that slashy damage from anywhere? That's a okay. Yeah, I'm about to start doing okay. the same thing back to it. Krogan, it's your turn. Good, because it's going to get some slasher damage, hopefully. Yeah, go for it, my dude. 17. That'll hit. I okay. Armor class 13. It hits again. All right, you free uh, Selcrest. That you're free, Selcrest. <laughs> uh, and also, there's a lot of damage there, so let me cut that up for you. Yeah. So, uh, 60 damage. There you go. Thank you so oh. much. You keep bludgeoning it back to the point where this giant tree thing should be dead, but it's not dying. And uh, for this point... And now that fire damage is actually doubled, I believe, because it does take extra damage from fire, correct? Yes. So that is actually... plus two, plus five, so it's plus seven more, so it's 67. Alrighty, I will add that extra damage right now. And yeah, once again, you pushed it beyond the point of where it should be alive. But it is still moving forward. Somebody please do something that will kill this thing! I'm working on it! Couch growls and bites. Ah. <laughs> it couch intersperses itself, moving between you and the briars, self-dress. Yeah. To protect no you. touch. Aww. Uh, oh, the bees no. stink briar. And sword, it's your move. All right, I will uh, take another swing at it with my spiritual weapon. All right. You're gonna hit so it, the first one. Yep. Spiritual weapon's doing good for you, sword. Just need to need to do those again. Nine. All righty. And then uh. <laughs> Instead of uh, swinging at it with my hammer, I'm going to uh -huh. uh, cast and flick. Oh shit! All right, you step forward, and a 13 will hit as you uh, unleash a terrible bout of, of black necrotic energy into it uh, for 32 points of damage. Uh, you hear the creature for the first time actually like yeah! scream out. And you see that green energy that's been emanating from it flicker as the necrotic energy uh, kind of crawls uh, inside ha! of the of the. I knew it. <laughs> yep, necrotic damage. This is damage. about to get really unpleasant for it then. Yes, it oh, is. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, 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 you know what to do. Uh, yeah. The end of your turn, sword. He's throwing six more ghost spiders, and 
four more swarms of vampire bats. Ten ghost spiders descend upon you, sword. What's your armor class? That's a lot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fortunately, it's 22. All right. One, two. One of them will get you for 12 points. Now, is that one that has Bane? Oh, uh... Or no, the, the uh, synaptic static? None of the spiders were affected by that. Um... No, one of them was affected by that. I'm gonna roll a d4. No, it was not one. It was not the one that was affected by it. Uh, all right, sword. Can you roll me a Constitution save? All right, you will succeed. So you're gonna take uh, 22 total damage uh, from the what that bite that hit you. Oh, sorry, you're an Azabar, so you're gonna take half the necrotic damage. So you're actually only gonna take 16. Oh, okay. Yep. So that's the second one. You have eight more. There's one that'll miss. Two, nope. Three, nope. Four, ooh, a critical hit. Uh, sword, uh, that's gonna be... Uh, I need another con save, actually. Ooh, uh, does Bless help with that? Maybe. You want to the Which is the other terrifying thing of if you can keep Bless. All right, yeah, you'll succeed. Uh, be... Keep Bless. Clutch. Yeah, right? Uh, so it's going to be 11 oh. plus 15 damage off that one. And there are four more ghost spiders. 11 plus 15? Or 15 total? Uh, 15 total. Uh, and that spider will miss you. That one will miss you. That one will miss you. And that one would just barely hit you. Uh, and another con save. Is it one of the Bane ones? Uh, no, the Bane one missed a while ago. It was the third one in the order. Oh, I see. I rolled to okay. see which one okay. it would be. Thank fudge for all this all right. constitution save. That's going to be another 14 damage. Oh, thank God he's resistant to necrotic damage. That's, where this, that's what's saving him here. Um, so yeah, another another um, 14 damage on that. Are you still up, Sword? You still doing good? I'm still good. Alrighty. So how many vampire bats did we spawn here? Uh, we got a whole bunch more. Uh, four more. <sighs> There are six swarms of the vampire bats going toward you, Selkris. Uh, four of them are going to go for you first because you are currently restrained. The first uh, one will bite I am not. She's not. You're, you're nice you're last round. Saber, right? <laughs> yeah. You're correct. My apologies. So it rolls a six, a no. ten, no, a twenty-five. That'll hit. Twenty on that one uh, for twenty-seven piercing. All right. It and does have. Does it have half its hit points, or is that a different no, one? It's the fresh vampire bat form. All right. All the new ones went down for you, uh, and then a nineteen. Uh, both of those will hit. I'll take All the right. twenty-seven, but I'll transfer the twenty-eight. To Levi, yeah. yeah. Levi will take that blow for you, no problem. And then the two remaining vampire bats that are baned, one's gonna go for you, sword, because it's already on you. A twenty-two to hit, actually, shit. Uh, but uh, it, it can't hit oh, because the bane hit from the bane, so that misses you. And the second one's gonna go for you, Lance. But Listen. oh, he can. Uh -huh. He misses you. He misses. Uh -huh. <laughs> nope, nope, that happened. Alrighty, the layer's done. There are now six swarms of vampire bats and the ten ghost spiders. There's, it's getting spookier. Yeah. Uh, There's a lot of. Are things. you sure it's not Spoopaween again? <laughs> yeah, right. Lance, it's your move. Does anyone have like a big blasty thing? I, I, are they all gathered up? They are like all one around you. Pretty much oh. are. Yeah, they're all around Selcrest all and Thor. <laughs> and all, almost all the vampire bats are around Selcrest. Little did you know, he was a wood of as I will step forward as my sword goes from its usual silver, flickering a red hue as Lance is gonna upcast some inflict wounds on this. Oh damn. Blood Moon Lance strikes again. Yeah, you'll hit him. Sword leading the charge, Lance following close after. Uh, go ahead and roll that damage. <sighs> oh, that's boy. a lot of damage, guys. Yikes. Oh, my. Really good rolls, too, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. 
That's a lot of damage. We have five. That robo level five. Cool. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, I bonus action sanctuary myself once again. <laughs> of course. Yep. <laughs> of course. Why not? And, uh, see, this is this is why in the game proper you can't cast two spells the same turn. Uh, but in D and D time, uh, Selkis, it's now your turn. Okay. Well. Oh, so Briar is looking like shit. Actually, I need to roll a, a save for land uh, for Briar. You said fifty-five points of damage. Yeah. Yep, 55 points of damage. Okay. It needs to roll okay. high. <laughs> no, I got With it. a stack of ahead, Bane so. and Snap. Yep. Uh, so Selkras is going to restore a spell slot to herself. Mm -hmm. Uh, with free action. And then and cast... Make sure you move away, too. I mean, she can't. She's not gonna, because she's casting Vampire Touch. <laughs> Excellent. So oh, first, boy, after. as you reach forward with your vampiric touch, you grasp your hands onto uh, the wood, and nothing happens. Really? Yeah, because as as your fingers grasp onto it, and you're like, ha ha, the necrotic energy pulses into the wood, but it's not like moving anymore. Mm. So like, Chris like will it, like it's already dead. Oh, so Chris will Nicole. knock on wood then. <laughs> you just gotta just knock on it. <laughs> like, your hand just kind of like breaks through it because it's got like this, the hollow uh, hardwood outer shell, but it's all rotten inside. Are the, uh, are the minions? Me flashbacks to when the great yeah, it, died. Uh, it died when Lance hit it for that amount of damage at that all point. Right. The sword put it into the dying range, and then it had an undead fortitude, which uh, it rolled a fourteen. It needed to roll a fifty. Uh, I'm sorry, a 60. So, uh, all right. Are its minions all dead? Uh, yeah, you're seeing the bats just kind of slowly fall out of the sky onto the ground, and the ghost spiders just run away. They don't Quick. actually go away, they just leave. Hurry, Lance, do something to Oven, bring him back. <laughs> oven kaplunk, clatters and like gets stuck halfway out of the swamp. Good couch. Good I run over as quick as I can and begin casting mending on. Korgoth's just gonna fly down. Like, okay, that was unexpected. Giant tree was not on my list of enemies I thought I would face. Well, as you go to fly down, Korogon, you can see a dull green glow oh. inside one of the hollows. I'm gonna go grab that, as I'm saying what I just said. Yeah, as you fly and as he does that, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be like, this is for oven. <laughs> <laughs> You take the square uh, hammer, and it's inanimate, so it's a critical hit. Uh, go ahead and kill the... And you obliterate uh, one of the, like, huge roots, just... <laughs> under the force of the square hammer. Pieces of wood splinter everywhere. Uh, a part of it just poofs into, like, sawdust. Of course I would do this after it was dead. <laughs> <laughs> well... Uh, of course, that's the only way to do it. How can you do this to oven? I'm going to convert the sawdust into termite. Oh god. Alright, your termites make short work. Begin to devour uh, Briar. As I grab the seed real quick. <laughs> Lance, can you save Oven? Kurogan, as you uh, fly into this dark hollow of the dead tree that was once Briar, you see what looks like something that was once maybe a heart, except it's covered in like bark and vine, almost like it was the heart of perhaps a, a, a tree ant or something in the past. Now the twisted dead heart of the, of the undead tree, you reach forward and you still see, very similarly to how you remember the seed, small veins of green light pulsing through it. But they seem to be- My precious. <laughs> And you become evil and kill everyone else. <laughs> you are able to grasp it and pull it out. It's maybe about the size of a football. Um, it's not the seed, but you knew you weren't here to get the seed. Yeah, You're I was here, here to, to get, get the, the heart of the cards. Well, no, a conduit to uh, <laughs> allow you all to, to firmly track this, and this yeah. seems to be appropriate. Is, Ooh, is there cool. is there any hope for Oven Lance? Is he gonna be okay? 
Is there any hope for Oven? Lance, as you look down at Oven, cradle, cradle it in your arms. It appears that there is no hope for Oven, as he was a simple construct. No, Oven! Perhaps Clint will be able to bring him back, given you that you have all his parts. But we're taking him to Clint. I Oven. pull out my we'll portable back hole, with us. put it on the but... ground, and we'll put Oven in my portable hole for us to take him back to Clint. Absolutely. Coach, come on. We'll go see Clint together. Yes, uh, it is time to go. I care what we came for. As I hold the, the hearts in my Coach. hands. <laughs> Coach looks toward all of you, and as you look back toward the tower, you see all sorts of strange animated things poking their heads out of, of, uh, out of the doorway, looking onward. Uh, you see a coat rack. <laughs> uh, no. You see what looks like an animated bathtub poking its head out, or head, whatever, some side of, side of it out. Yeah, we get it. Um, yes, a chest of drawers and all sorts of things. And as Couch looks toward them and then looks toward you, Couch shakes its front in a, in a sign of no, uh, implying that it, he needs to stay, Couch needs to stay here with his family. Aww. We could okay. probably bring them all, honestly. Couch moves over and, and does give each of you a nuzzle and Selcrest a horrible lick. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't I mean, mind. There's worse yeah, things I mean, in the Underdark. Yeah, I mean, you used to have spider pets. Getting licked by spiders is way more terrifying than this couch. Yep. Uh, and couch kind of waves one of its stumpy little feet goodbye uh, and goes to make its way back toward the, the tower. We'll come tell Clint to visit you! And as the lot of you uh, stand amid the the cold, arid landscape of the current Veridac, you hear a brief static, and then, oh, it's Roger. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I, I just, there was some strange difference. There was a big burst of, of power uh, that the scrying array could detect, and now it's all getting very dull. Uh, wh what happened? We have the heart thing. Yeah, there Good. was a tree. Excellent. The others just got back here with theirs. I think uh, the power is waning on theirs. I hope yours is in better shape. But either way, if we put them both together, it should hopefully be enough to get the array to lock on. All right. Let's hurry back. Yes, All let right. us go. Roger, uh, could you have Clint meet us in the return chamber? You know, I just realized something. We don't actually need to use the magic catapult to fly up to the moon. I mean, it's the fastest way, but uh, because there, you get like air bubbles in space from exiting the atmosphere, we could just fly up there. Oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we could just fly up there. <laughs> uh, as Korogon begins to just sputter madness, uh, you all... Actually, uh, if we can... Tell Clint to meet us in the, in the, the room. The catapult room. We have an urgent. We have a. We have someone down. Roger's like, oh no, what happened? There's no time for we this. Get us back. Oh my goodness, I haven't heard Lance. Lance, there's there. no time. There's no time. Just bring us back. That. Uh, all right, I'm quickly sending another pod so you don't have to walk down. Just uh, be careful. It's coming down fast. And out from the sky, you see a giant glass sphere just mm, pff, land on the ground in front of you. Everybody get out of here! Yeah, everyone hurries in with Oven. Excellent. Uh, quickly, you are launched back up into the, into, toward the moon base, uh, where Roger and the others are, are waiting. And, yeah, I think, although there is more to discuss and more to say, uh, <laughs> I think this is where our adventure ends for this evening. Um, oh man, uh, I wanted to see Roger's reaction to Oven being the one down. <laughs> Son of a bitch! <laughs> uh, uh, and you all just... It's always the young ones. And... <laughs> God damn it, why? Why do the, the good die young? Why it was, couldn't it have been Carl gone? I'm sorry, Carl gone. Wow, rude. 
but yeah, you Marvel seed in this adventure. You gained no Bartholomew bucks and no experience. Welcome to Legend Tier. Uh, yeah, it sucks. I mean, it, it rocks to be. The, welcome, the Sword, guy. I guess. Yeah, Sword, welcome to Legend Tier. Welcome. Yeah. But yeah. First impressions? It sucks. <laughs> It's pretty dour here, yeah. It's... Yeah, it's not the greatest experience. But, you I don't know. know. This is a pretty goofy it. adventure. I liked this one. It was very, yeah, this one was very, a uh, lot of fun. Pretty, pretty I couldn't call it good. We lost oven. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> How could we be happy First with oven that? Saba. Uh, although Clinton has very much more to talk to you all about, uh, he is able to restore oven to life. Because Yay! A simple Yay! construct. <laughs> he could not have probably restored couch to life if couch had died. Oh, thank oh, goodness man. Couch didn't die. Ooh. Well, Lance could have restored Couch to life. Oh yeah, I wasn't about to let Couch die. <laughs> I was saving a fifth level spell slot for healing Couch if he went dead. I respect that. Congratulations so on your victory, y'all. Yeah, Thanks, thank Pete. <laughs> yep, and thank you all for playing. Well, thank you for running. Yeah, thank you for running. We love it. Yeah. That was excellent. Well, Jeremy, shall guys... we away to the promised land? I was gonna say, although your characters have earned no bucks, would you like to shop on other characters? Or are you guys good for the time? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm also good. Saving up for another big, big Bartholomew's choice. I'm right. maybe start. I may start saving up on. for a joy Bartholomew choice. Well, that'll be a joy to see. Joyous day, stay All right. Day, stay All right. Bye. All right, where are the outro? All right, you've taken me away. I've did taken you, you away you to that the spectator. That special place, I did. Oh, uh, which oh, means spectator. You and I are both here upon the outro screen. That's true. Hello, everyone. It's nice we're, to be here. We're people. Thank you all for being here. We love you guys. We super appreciate uh, any of you guys who are still sticking around at this incredibly late hour. Uh, that was a blast to play. And to run. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching it too. Finish at 4 a.m. No surprise on Double Legend. <laughs> I'll say we actually did pretty good for a Double Legend day, like time wise. Yeah, it could have been. Pretty good. It uh, could have been a 